Hey, it's the Bennington Show. Starting off with some Sly, the motherfucking family stone. Uh, I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. Uh, and back to me. I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm? Sounds like. Yeah, I don't like the way I do that anymore. I think I'm almost done with that. No. I'm almost done with that. No. No. (laughs) Well, this is it, folks. I have done it. I have picked my final two teams for the World Series. In the National League, I picked the Chicago Cubs. And if you're to believe TV, they're not playing against anyone else. (laughs) All the celebrities and all the TP and everybody in the city of Chicago. Did you guys watch uh, when they clinched? It was amazing. The entire city of Chicago uh, danced in the streets. uh, Basically did a we did it. If I was in Cleveland, I'd be pissed right now. And I would be doing this. Burning Pearl Jam albums as I sat here. <laughs> Ed Vetter um, ended up uh, in the champagne bath with the players being carried around. Of course. I mean, I know he's, he's like from Evansville or something, right? Yeah. I, I just don't think when you're the celebrity, you get to be part of you don't We think- <laughs> Won the Pennant. <laughs> Bathe me with champagne. I've been with you this whole time. Yeah, it doesn't. It seems like if that would be the same as the Cubs coming out and taking the bow at the end of the the show. And he's had it rough these last few years. He needed this win. Why? No, he hasn't had it rough. He's fucking. Oh, okay. All right. So you were doing a little. I thought there was something I didn't know. I am not part of the Pearl Jam fucking email chain that goes out. But. Um, you know, Bill Murray, of course, is Mr. Chicago. Yeah. John Cusack is Mr. Chicago. Uh, Cleveland, they don't have, well, right now they have Drew Carey, who I don't believe has been in Cleveland in 40 years, no, but maybe I'm right. wrong. <laughs> uh, and is he still doing that game show in the he's, daytime? He's still the host of The Price is Right. Never thought he could keep that gig. Congratulations, Drew. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's a long time he did now. It. Yeah, he did. He pulled it off. He deserves a champagne bath for that. Um, now you are betting and have bet since the beginning of the season. Yes. Chicago Cubs. Go all the way. Where's your Cubs hat? Where's your Cubs gear? I'm getting the my Cubs, all the, like the AL, the uh, World Series, the pen stuff is coming in. I'm hmm. picking it up today. Would a, a true fan say, I'm getting it? No. A no, true the, fan no, would no, already it's have the new, it. You want the new stuff. Look, let me tell you something, Gail. Get rid of all my old gear. Chris, his whole life has waited for the Cubs to pull this off. I have. He, Bill Murray, John Cusack, Eddie Vedder. <laughs> now, who do you... I'm going to go to Vito first because you're a National League guy. Do you root National League every year or you go back and forth? Uh, it all depends on the team. Not for me. I'm 100% National League because I want to make sure somebody won in a baseball league. Where everybody bets. Thank okay. You. Thank you. I want it to be the sport of baseball. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These American League pussies, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Thank you. Uh, we're not South Siders, Chris. We're hell North no. We're North Siders. <laughs> so, Vito, I gave you the three Chicago guys that are getting this three celebrities that are getting all the love. I want you to rank them as fans, not career wise fans. And by the way, they've all had that's three fantastic careers. So go ahead from bottom to top. Number three. Three, I'm going to have to put Eddie Vedder. Okay, let's do it this way. Will you, you say number three for me, and then you say, go ahead. <laughs> number three for me has to be Eddie Vedder. Why is that? Because I've never really seen him do say anything about the Cubs before. He wrote a Cubs song. Yeah. <laughs> the, maybe the world's worst Cubs song in history, and that's hard to do. <laughs> All right. Number two, I'm going to have to Wait. put... Wait. So got- number two for you? Yeah, of yeah, course. Okay. Or Mew, I would accept. Yeah. Number two for you, I'm going to have to put John Cusack because he was wearing like a leather jacket and no fan stuff sitting front row the other he night. He was cold. Uh, <laughs> he lives in Chicago and he knows how that weather can change. All right. And number one for fun. Perfect. Yeah, you got it. He's going to have to be Bill Murray because he's always just he's always been a Cubs guy. He's always been wearing Cubs hats, Cubs gear. He's a Cubs guy. Everybody agree with that lineup? Yeah, I think that that's a fair assessment. I might put Cusack number one because he lives in Chicago. Full time? Full time, yeah. I mean, that, that makes, I mean, you know. Oh, yeah, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. He Murray never... hasn't been there since Second City. <laughs> He's like gallivanting all over the but place. But he was, well, uh, this is another thing. 
<laughs> Both Murray and uh, Cusack are Chicago born and bred. Where, where, Evansville? Where the fuck is that? Indiana or something? Some bullshit. It isn't some bullshit. It's an actual place. <laughs> I'm just saying whether you get to say <laughs> you're the number one guy. They take that vet Chicago. I've never seen people take more personally about they really fucking hate if you're from like Deerfield and you say you're from That's Chicago. That's bullshit. That's the exact opposite. I know a lot of people like that from different cities because Philly gets that way. Yeah. They actually use the term when you're watching TV there, Chicagoland. And it's this dumb, expansive thing that just rolls out as far as you can go. Everybody that lives anywhere in Chicago says they're from Chicago. But doesn't that bother anyone who's from any city when you meet someone and they're like, yeah, I'm from New York, too. And then you find out they're from like Long Island or Westchester. And you're like, well, you're not really from the city. Right. But like, I think that that goes across the board. But I think here's what you're looking people- for. You're looking for shorthand because you only say that to people from other places that you meet. Right. So, but then they don't expect to be talking a real deal from but, like from see, the actual place. But see, here's the thing for you. Where would you say you're from? I would say I'm from New York City. No, where would you say you were from? Oh, originally, yes. I would say I was from Florida. You don't say Tampa Bay or St. Pete. I would say St. Pete. If, if but somebody asked me, you never lived in St. Pete. But I was born in St. Pete. Well, that's because there's no goddamn hospitals in Seminole. <laughs> Nobody knows Seminole. By the way, uh, tomorrow, uh, a Tampa guy, Bert Kreischer, yeah. a mast. I'm so excited for that. It was exciting to meet him finally in person in Montreal. Because oh, it was very weird because you guys had a history and I had only spoken to him on the phone. So it was yeah. like we were real life friends. <laughs> well, but don't feel too good about it because Kreischer is friends with the planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Kreischer yeah. could get off a plane, <laughs> meet someone and go to their house, have dinner and sleep and feel very comfortable about it. There's, Wherever he goes. There's something about... Kreischer and Tom Segura both, that you're just like, hey, am I friends with you both? Or like, I'm one of the guys too, right, guys? Well, first of all, yeah, because they seem so comfortably friends with each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the annoying thing is when you talk to one, you bring up the other. And they're both headliners. So I don't know how often they're together. Right. <laughs> but people act like they do a, a show together. Um, I got to, uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to get into this. There's a thing online that they want Bob Euchre to come in and do the World Series because of Wild Thing. Um, No, that's not going to happen. (laughs) NBC, I don't care how many names you get on that. NBC has their star lineup, and that's it. And also, uh, you know, like that's something that would be significant for maybe the rest of the country. But it's like the true fans, it's not like they like it because of the movie. That's not why they're fans. Well, but, but here's the thing. When you're a fan of a baseball team, you have your own announcer all season that is taken off yeah. during this. So no fans are happy that Joe Buck is fucking talking about Everyone them. Everyone hates Joe Buck. <laughs> Say that again. Everyone hates Joe Buck. Now, that isn't just here, but also in Midnight Cowboy. Remember how they treated him? <laughs> sure. I mean, they treated him like shit. They really did. Uh, so that isn't going to happen. Despite, now I got it. I, you know how we always keep uh, a secretive thing to our judges. Yes. When we do uh, comedy one on one, and I'm talking about mentors. The hmm, the new, we're part of the New York Comedy Festival this time. We are, and they don't get our premise. <laughs> They're like, look at all the other shows. <laughs> um. We we like to, you know, let everybody know who's going to be in the shows. Right. That's it's never a secret. A selling point. <laughs> yeah. Which I never realized the before. Tickets. So um, I go, well, can't we just say secret judges? And they're like, I guess we can do anything. But if you guys want to be, they want to, even though our show is going to be sold out, they want to be able to put it up, like, look at all the great shows that are going right. on. Right. <laughs> and I think some of our people aren't even anywhere else in the New York Comedy Festival, so they think it would be a good thing. So that's where we are right now. We have to decide whether we want to... Do we want to do it our own thing? <laughs> yeah, and for <laughs> no reason... part of it. <laughs> see, here's the thing. 
By doing it our own way, we gain nothing. <laughs> and it doesn't mean anything. Like, no one, everyone that shows up knows they're going to end up loving our gu- uh, judges because they know they're going to have something to do with this universe. So, it looks like we are going to be announcing the judges. Unless anyone has a big problem with that. This is exciting, but highly unusual. New territory. I feel nervous. So you think we should, Chris, or not? I think we should. Really? Chris Stanley going along with the man. Yeah. Being cucked out as usual (laughs) by the man. I put cucked in uh, in an intro I did the other day. (laughs) Saying that someone cucked me. I said that Tracy Ullman cucked me (laughs) because she kept touching me during the interview, was rubbing my hair and doing stuff. So I say in this intro, I do. I'm not saying that she cucked me. I'm just saying, well, someone said to me afterwards, because she just kept touching me and teasing me and stuff. And someone said to me, hey, man, Tracy Ullman was flirting with you. And I go, I wish. Tracy Ullman was treating me like I was her friend's little brother. Right. That she could just (laughs) fuck with, even though for that little brother, it's arousing. (laughs) Because funny girls are really fucking hot. No one ever brings that up. They are. But it's true. They are. Tracy Ullman was crazy hot. Crazy hot. And everyone in the room felt it. I love the idea of cucked being in one of your (laughs) controls, though. By the way, I I was discussing this with Chris, that Chris and I have started to use cuck. Like, remember we talked about this in the past? Like, someone will say something, you're like, that's lame. Like, I was saying, son. Like, what's up, son? Now, cuck is like, me and Chris are seriously saying cuck. What's up, cuck? Like, what's up, my cuck? (laughs) Now, like, it's not getting... Now, like, something that we thought was obnoxious and stupid. (laughs) We're like, I just got cucked out dude you're seriously gonna cock me like that right now <laughs> cuck my lady cuck, cuck, cuck my lady, lady. <laughs> so anyway when i said that during the intro this thing that i was doing chris had to lay on the floor almost destroying the intro <laughs> lost my shit when you dropped the cock because chris and i had to come in and record stuff because there's never yeah. any studio stuff we had to come in on a saturday and then that cost me uh, seven hundred dollars in sushi to give them <laughs> Seven hundred hours worth of sushi. He ate. I know it was that expensive. Thank you very much. And this is I'm going to give them all the credit in the world. So they come out and they give you this raw fish that is a the the head still on it. Right? Uh huh. Oh, that sounds and great. Our Chris Stanley gladly ate head and bones. Ooh, delicious! It was amazing. They say yeah. head meat is like the best. Yeah. For some and, reason. Yeah. Oh no! The cock was forced to eat the head meat. No. I wasn't cocked. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to announce. And then we're going to get, uh, we've got some people that want to talk uh, World Series with us. And it's exciting. I'm telling you right now, as much as I hate professional football, and it stinks this year, there's no great teams. That's why people stop watching. There's no great teams. <laughs> but we got a World Series where we will see history. No matter who wins. This is really exciting. Either the shitty Indians or the shitty Cubs. Amazing Cubs. We'll be able to say for the first time in in a million years, we're not so shitty now, are we? <laughs> you fucking cucks. We <laughs> cucked this league out. So 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. All right, I'm going to ma- make the announcement on the judges uh, for one-on-one now. And by the way, Gail doesn't know. Vito doesn't know. And Chris doesn't know the last one. Mm-mm. You know two. Yeah. Two of the three. And obviously, we're only doing this for the purposes that now we can be welcome into the ad world of the yeah. New York comedy. We want to be the weirdos. I have a feeling this might change it for us, though. We might pre-announce forever now. You think that this yeah, could- I don't think it matters. Even though we liked it. I don't think it matters. I like the way the audience went crazy, though. Yeah. <laughs> But now they're just going, yeah, I know. We saw the sign. Um, number one, and he is, uh, I'm going to say he's probably number one in our hearts as for sweet, bald people. 
You're going to go crazy for this one, Gail, because I know you love this guy. Coming back to 101, Robert Kelly. Yeah! yeah. Now, that was difficult because the commissioner thought that since Robert Kelly threw the bell at one of the contestants, <laughs> he should not be there. And by the way, go to the com for tickets. And as I said, we're going to do a ticket giveaway before this happens. But if you want to secure, be there, Robert Kelly. Now, also, the next... How could we not have literally our favorite judge? The godfather of New York City crowd work. Half of My Wife Hates Me podcast, which I think you're doing something. I am, yeah. To, to be announced. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Rich Foss. Yeah! yeah! Ow, ow, ow! Ow! And ow! I don't think, um, I don't think uh, I'm hurting anybody else by saying Rich Foss is the most decorated mentor in the history of Comedy 101. Oh, by far. Clearly. And I don't know if anybody makes me laugh harder. <laughs> now this one's going to freak you guys out. Chris, you don't know it. This is exciting. Vito, I know you don't know it. <laughs> No Gail, you don't know this one. He is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I've known him now, I think, 16 years. If not, maybe 15 or 16 years. He is the person who holds the record for consistent shows in XM radio history. As the morning man, he's got specials, he's in movies, he has TV uh, appearances, but most people know him as Sam's best friend, Mr. Jim Norton! Yeah! 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 That's awesome! This is going to be so good! Has agreed to do Comedy 101. Holy shit. This is... uh. This is going to be make it my favorite uh, comedy one on one of all time, but I fear those three guys sitting together, <laughs> we may not get to the contestants. I know those are three really heavy hitters. Well, they're that the, they are the strongest hitters. Uh, Colin Quinn went to them time and time again for tough crowd. So because they're brutal with each other, and they're also like I said, absolutely hilarious. I predict this to be the social event of the season. Oh, yeah. This is going to make the autumn. It's going to make the autumn. It's going to make the autumn, guys. Yes, it will. It'll make the autumn. <laughs> That's him helping me. <laughs> That's fucking fish eater jumping in. Love fish. Pricey. Didn't realize. Look at, look at Obama. He's out there every day working against Trump. Every single day. He hates Trump. He really does. Uh, so this is going to be fantastic. I those three, I don't know. This is going to be a pretty brutal one. Like pretty, <laughs> I I fear for our youngsters. I'm really excited for Norton. Vince Vincent wrote this. Cuck be my lady tonight. <laughs> Cuck be my lady tonight. <laughs> It's a great word. Uh, most people didn't want us to announce the secret judges, but we did want to. Uh, we did want to. Uh, I'll be part of that. Hey, let's go over to uh, Patrick. Patrick in New York. What's up? Hey guys, how's it going? Cool. Hey, um, uh, one quick thing before I get to what I was going to say. I'm coming on Tuesday to the Unmask, and I can't wait to see you guys. I've got a, I've got a present for you, Ronnie, and I got one for Gail. I don't know what to get a Chris anymore. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. What the hell do I buy him? What do you do? I think a sweet twenty dollar bill might make Chris Stanley feel pretty <laughs> good about himself. Twenty my way. <laughs> like a, Bring it. Little, little birthday card like your grandma would yeah. give you. Either that or get him a gift card to Urban Outfitter. <laughs> Cash it is. No problem. Cash like... is king, and I'll do it. 
You're showing up for a great mass too, man. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Me and my son are can't wait to can't wait to come. Oh Some shit, son. <laughs> yeah, you know, he loved <laughs> he loved uh, he loved Brian Regan on Mask, and he can't wait to you know he can't wait to see but, this one. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun for him. It's a it's a family event. There's no doubt about it. It's a family event. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Christ, is insane. I love him. So, but I I wanted to hear what you guys thought about that that um they want Rick. The wild thing, Vaughn, throw out the first pitch for Cleveland. Never going to happen. <laughs> Never <laughs> going to happen. Look, let's say this. Have they ever had him throw out a pitch during the regular season? No, never. Uh, yeah, no, I think he did. He threw out, he threw out pitches out of games before. Sure, well, yeah. Let me say this. Cle- pre or post HIV? Oh, uh, pre, yeah. Okay. Before he... Gave everybody, yeah. Yeah, gave women HIV allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly but, uh, I mean, gave everybody who knew HIV. <laughs> <laughs> but come on. Six hours of drinking, you know everybody in that stand is going to be there, and, and they're going to cheer if they hear Wild oh, Thing play. Well, dude, if they fucking play Wild Thing and he comes walking out, I'll go, fuck, I'll switch from National to American League in a fucking hard <laughs> time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I would even be excited just to see the catcher throw up. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, well, look, the funny thing about it is, is as people who like to see the underdog, this would be 100% of the time we'd be rooting for Cleveland. <laughs> Every time Cleveland gets there, something fucking terrible happens. I feel bad for them. Eh, you know. What can I say? It's their own fault. They got a ball team. I'll give them that. Yeah. Unlike Montreal, they got their own goddamn club still. No one took it from them. Uh, Garth, Indiana, what's up? Hey, Ronnie. Hey. Man, this just this fucking thought of a World Series in my lifetime is just unfucking real. Chris Stanley? What's up? If they if they win and you get that 200 bucks from Hard Rock Johnny, I'm sending you a Big fat fucking cup hat for your big melon. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if they make a cup hat that big. I'm gonna have to order it on one. <laughs> Just oh, see man. if it fits over your globe, and then send it in. <laughs> uh, how crazy were you going the other night, man? When when they clinched, dude, I, I was hugging and crying and kissed my wife and my son, and it was just. It just still fucking feels like a dream. Like, it's just not I know. not fathomable yet. I was just sitting there, and I watched as long as that would go on. Yeah. Of just seeing people in the streets going crazy, and I'm like, "This isn't the end of the World Series. You just won the pennant." Yeah, there's and, still four more fucking wins. I mean, they're actually cocky about it. They're all each one of them yelling, "Just four more, everybody. That's, it. That's all we got to do." And look who we're uh, beating: the lousy, lowly, shit eating. Cleveland Indians, <laughs> this is a gimme. You th- you'd think that they would have, like, a, just feel like kindred spirits a little with no. them. Well, first of all, and I, I thought the players were pretty funny about it, because the players were like, uh, I guess this is about the fans. I didn't even know, you know. These guys didn't grow up in Chicago. So the players were actually saying, I'm happy for a lot of these old fans that they bought tickets for. Um <laughs> For us, we've always felt like we were going to make it to the championship. <laughs> like, this doesn't feel like a dream, and it doesn't feel nuts. We're all 23 years old, and we've won everything we've done in our lives up to this point. So we don't know why you're surprised. I'm a winner, folks. Um, here is uh, here's Eric. Eric. Hello, Bennington. Hey. So, I'm torn on who to root for in this World Series. Let me explain this. I am originally from Cleveland, Ohio, but I live in Colorado, which is a National League team. Now, first of all, you are... Now, how old were you when you left Cleveland? Uh, Ten. Let me tell you something. If you had a ball team when you were ten years old, that's your ball team for life. I've lived here for 16 years. I could give two shits about the Yankees and Mets. I don't hate them any more than anybody else would hate the Yankees and Mets. Yeah. When they win, I'm like happy for my friends, but I don't go putting on a goddamn hat and running down to the parade like I'm part of it. I'm not. (laughs) And it doesn't hurt me that I'm not. Yeah. That is not. That is not what God gave me. 
Okay, I'm not that like that lady out in Washington who decided to become black and uh, started <laughs> running the NAACP. No, you're stuck with what you were born with. I'm not like fucking Bruce Jenner, the gold medal winner who decided, even though he has a penis, he's a lady. No, that's cheating God. <laughs> I'm a conservative white man voting for Donald Trump, and I'm sticking with the team that I was born to. And let me tell you, my teams, that's a curse. You got to carry your curse with you. Right? I know. You don't go around acting like the Eagles blow. I'm going to suddenly jump on the Patriots. That's something that's fucking lower than treason. Yeah, pieces of shit do that. Now, my situation is interesting because we would go see the Phillies do spring training. So to me, that was my team because they were down there. And the Tampa Bay Devil Rays did not exist until after. Can I tell you something? You were born without a team. Yeah, I, I was mean, teamless. Statistically, you should be a Braves fan, but because they're the only a full day's ride away from where you were born. <laughs> but since I wasn't a Braves fan, you weren't going to catch on to it. Yeah. You went to Phillies games. You were forced into it. Yes. Okay. You can be a Phillies fan. No, that's not a good thing. No, no, no. I feel like an adopted child of that team. Yeah. But the t- like the Rays, like that means nothing to me because I was gone. It should mean nothing to you. It was I mean, if I had if they had existed when I was little. This is the kind of fair weather people who live out there. I'm not going to say who I was talking to someone yesterday. Let's just say it's one of the editors for the entire bang. Mm. And this person said to me, it's a tough day for me because my team is playing my team. What? They're a Steelers and Patriots fan. You can't be a Steelers. No. Even though they were born here in what I would call the Bay Area of New York City, <laughs> where they had two other teams that they could have picked as any time they wanted. Hometown teams. Yeah. And they had a chance for two. Can I just say something? Yeah. Uh, I don't give Eddie Vedder as the number one Cubs fan. I don't give John Cusack the number one Cubs fan. And I certainly don't give Bill Murray the number one Cubs fan. I'm going to give this to a Chicago person who not only has been there with the Cubs and the Bulls, but had tickets every cold year to so. Soldier Field. <laughs> she watched the games at Soldier Field. <laughs> this is the number one Cubs fan, Janice in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's too exciting. <laughs> I know, Janice. <laughs> this is the problem now, Janice. The time between the pitches during the entire World Series feels like it takes so long. That the tension is enough to choke you till you die. Mm-hmm. I'll be sitting there comfortable. Because I don't give a fuck. I just want to enjoy baseball. That must be nice. But, Vito, can I count on you to watch every inning of this? Yes. Chris, can I count on you to watch every inning? Of course. I have to. Janice is forced in every inning. I'm going to be watching every inning. Gail? Sure, I'm in. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Janice? It's so exciting. If they now, Janice, if they take this away from you in your city now, if Cleveland comes in there and pisses all over the north side, oh god, it'll be worse than death. Yeah, I can't can't even imagine. It's just been such a cool year, and Joe Mann's amazing, and he's amazing, and it's so nice that you stole him from Tampa. Uh, But he he's the best thing about that organization. I mean, I don't know anyone who is a baseball fan who doesn't say, oh, I love Joe Madden. Even when they're at the beat him, they're like, I still love. It's very hard to pull off that type of thing because he's not a dick. He's baseball smart. And he's also like a regular guy. Yeah. It's and like he's done Jesus so many cool nice. things this year. But if you guys lose this. Everybody in Chicago will be th- taking the elevator to throw your- themselves off your one tall building. <laughs> I can't imagine. No. <laughs> no. Now, here's the other weird thing, too. Obama grew up a Cubs fan, and so did Hillary Clinton. 
Well, she threw that hat out when she moved to New York, but she's <laughs> secretly putting it back on because that was her and her dad's bond. Mm -hmm. They had a bond of that. Chris, you had a bond with your dad of watching off, looking around while he was shoplifting <laughs> and getting him up. <laughs> <laughs> you saw <laughs> Which is weird because there's no toucans in Astoria. <laughs> Look up here. Look, Look up here. here. That's the funniest shit ever. <laughs> so, Janice, tomorrow night you're going to be there in front of your thin sized TV just <laughs> watching each pitch. What are you going to be eating? Oh, I haven't thought that far. <laughs> I want to. I want us all to eat Chicago food all week. That sounds good. That okay. means we put a salad on a hot dog. Perfect. Like uh, it. You take ten pizzas and you jam them together. I call it one pizza. Yum. No, that, that's. I gotta say, that's one thing we've never been into. Sausage. You like sausage? <laughs> now, why this is happening? Like I said, Hillary's a Cubs fan. They're giving Bill Murray the award. That'll be. Friday night, they put it on TV, but they did it, the Mark Twain Award. Mm -hmm. It seems like Hillary, Obama, obviously Eddie Vedder, everything is coming together big. Finally. Yeah. Now, have you ever heard the Eddie Vedder Chicago Cubs song? I don't think I have heard it. Is it big, Janice, in Chicago? Uh, I hate to say I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. There's no reason for you to. You might turn on the Cubs. <laughs> Why don't you hear this song? This is the <laughs> least Pearl Jammy sounding song of all time. And what's the name of it, Chris? All the Way. All the Way. This is Eddie Vedder's. And he did this a couple years ago. Yeah. So it's not like he just did it two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess he had a right to be in there being carried around and covered in champagne. He wrote the song. Uh, but take a, take a listen to All the Way by Eddie Vedder. For a second, I would call this a cuck sings about the cups. <laughs> cucks. <laughs> cucks. Cucks now, win. a couple things bother me about this song. First of all, it doesn't sound like better. Two, he brings up that when he was a little kid, he was keeping score. No, no little kid should be keeping score unless they have zero athletic ability. <laughs> keeping score is for somebody who doesn't get to bat until the last inning. <laughs> That's something old people would do at the ball game. <laughs> Down in spring training, every old lady would be bringing her own scorecard and keeping score the whole time. And uh, and it would always be sweet, but it would break my heart and because I'd always end up talking to them. And it was always because their husband got him into baseball, and then he's been gone, and she still comes to spring training games. And I would always say the same thing. Would you buy me a beer right now, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? Get me a couple beers. Are you really crying, Gail? I can't. I'm not that kidding you. That's the easiest cry ever. But I'm not kidding you because I was always a spring training guy. I met hundreds and hundreds of old ladies and they all had those little board, the things that you buy. So There's sweet. like a million of them. Yeah. Um. So, Janice, we wish you all the luck in the world. It's going to be nerve wracking. And uh, I always kind of feel bad that I so don't like Joe Buck, but I'm glad to hear I'm not alone. I just... Oh no, there's no reason to feel <laughs> that you hate Joe Buck. He's awful. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only way that I want to see Joe Buck is if Artie is doing the game with him and ruining his career. Did you ever see when he, they tried to give him a talk show? Oh, God. And Artie went on there and just, I, I don't know whether they got the episode too. Artie, it's, it's the most brutal thing you've ever seen in your life. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. I know it sounds selfish, but I hope Fezzi still has this Cubs shirt they sent him once. I will check with him. <laughs> it would make me very happy to know he still yeah. had it. Aww. You know, uh, I saw that pic of Fezzi the other day, and his... He's got, you know, three buttons undone, mm -hmm. so you really get a good look at the chest scar. I saw that. It looks good. fantastic. Though. It looks really cool. <laughs> yeah. It was good to see him. Yeah. All right. Yay, Fezzy. All right. I love you guys. Bye, darling. We're going to do it, Janice. 
Just like Eddie Vedder said. We're going all the way. That seems more like one of those Trump protest songs. Like, it's got, like, kind of, like, two chill vibes. Well, first of all, the lyrics seem like they're written from somebody in the 1930s. (laughs) (laughs) We look at the old school ball. Magic in the eye of the... First of all, why don't you sing the fact that I've never been to Wrigley where the entire place wasn't just fucking knee wobbling drunk. (laughs) I used to think that they were the worst fans ever. And then as years went by, I got a soft spot for them. I used to fucking ride them pretty hard, though. Oh, we ought to play that uh, Cubs thing today, too, Chris. Okay. Um, hey, um, Hey, Bob. Bob in Virginia. Hey, Ronnie, did you ever take Gail Hand to Lenny's in Clearwater? Absolutely, all the time. Philly cheesesteak omelet? Yeah, Lenny's yep. is a great, great place. Good, good shit. That, the reason I was calling, I was wondering if you think that the, the proliferation of fantasy sports has taken away some of the fandom, uh, uh, I, I'll cite myself as an example. Uh, my, my son got me into this fantasy football league, and I'm a Redskins uh, fan. I was born a Colts fan, but I can't fucking stand the Indian- Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I'm uh, with you. But, but, but I've got Tom Brady as my quarterback, and I find myself uh, watching NFL Red Zone and not giving a fuck about the Redskins uh, because I'm trying to rack up points and beat these fucking kids that are my, my children's age. <laughs> I know. First of all, I'm going to agree with you. Like, a lot of people might judge this gentleman, but when you become addicted to something, it's very, very difficult to be yourself anymore. Yeah, uh, when we were into fantasy football, Sundays turned into me screaming at a television and acting like a psychopath, like really bad. Yeah, I, 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 I stopped enjoying Sunday at all. It we were playing all day long because it's just it just becomes a different. It's not about football. It's about this like it's game about following numbers. You're not watching yeah. the plays. You're watching as the numbers come in. Uh, you know, you got it all locked on your phone, and you know, suddenly you see you got yourself got an extra three points because somebody scored a fucking. T- it's annoying as hell. It's unbearably annoying. I think a lot of things have gone wrong with the NFL. Uh, and a big part of it has to do with uh, parody, and uh, I think a big far, a, a big part of it has to do with changing of a couple of rules. I mean, just to sit around all weekend to see if some wide receiver can dive is now the game. It has nothing to do with the strategy of football, what it always used to be about, you know. But just like, hey, we might be out of it. But maybe we have one guy who can dive and his and and the ball sticks to his gloves, you know. And back in the day of like Johnny Unitas, he would set up, set up, set up, and then go in the other direction. You know what I mean? He'd have the entire defense moving some way, and then boom, he goes in the other direction. And people are like, "That man's a genius." He ran it three times off the fucking left tackle, and then play action and threw to his right, and people were amazed by that. Now, it's like, go down as far as you can, leap, and let's see if the ball sticks to your glove. Strategy is out the game. And do we have one great team? No, there's not one. Two teams are supposed to be great, played last night, to a 6-6 tie. Uh, That's an overtime. It was a 3-3 tie when the game ended. Yeah. And 6-6 in overtime. Um, You know, luckily... There's a little show called Westworld that I was happier to go to. Yeah, I turned it off. Good episode. That was a crazy good over my head. I've got a study and restudy episode. Yeah, because I already I feel like some of the theories I had from last week are kind of out. I think the Reddit theories shot to shit. The one that Chris Stanley stole does his own. <laughs> yeah, the one I tried to steal. Yeah, that's shot to shit. No, you didn't try to steal. No, you, you stole did. it you and did. then we're a cat the capture. <laughs> Don't act like you stopped yourself. Or... You're like, got him. <laughs> Not only did you steal it, you stole it. What? And you're so dumb. You stole it right before we were going to have Vito read it. Didn't realize Vito was going to read it. You're not paying attention when you're so... in the other room, are you? That's why you need to stay there. <laughs> sometimes you go in there. You have to. Mm-mm. No, sometimes I really do. Um, Dave Columbus. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. The uh, Eddie Vedder song. Yeah. Does that remind you of the Dropkick Murphys doing all the Boston Red Sox stuff? Well, 
the shipping off the uh, up to Boston is actually a great fucking song. That's the oh, difference. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that song. You're not. You're a Yan- you're a Yankees fan. And <laughs> you're, you're like, like singing the Boston. Oh, hell yeah. Or, you have to admit in your life of nothing else, the Boston fans are better than the fucking Yankee fans. Uh, hell no. I don't have any problem saying that. Look, I'm a Cubs fan, but I, I, I would never say that fucking shitty Boston fans are better than the Yankees. Sounds, They're better. That sounds confusing, Chris. There's only one good, there's only one cheer that the Yankees fans have. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. That's it. That's as far as they go. And they're excited about that. <laughs> Maybe it's the Red Sox good. had a player as good as Derek. Look at this. Clinton's going to walk out with Elizabeth Warren in New Hampshire. New Hampshire? The woman that most women wish was running. Yeah. And is probably hated more by the Republicans than Hillary Clinton. Yeah, because she's... she's uh, A lefty left left. Very lefty. She's yeah. Bernie-esque. She's like a lady Bernie. She is such a lefty that my nickname for her is Steve Carlton. <laughs> She's like one of the, um, I think she was one of the first politicians who showed up at Occupy Wall Street, or at least showed support to Occupy that. Wall Street. Um, she was like, I think it's great. <laughs> and even most Democrats are like, uh. Chris in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ron. Hey. Great point on the Vetter song. Um, he actually wrote that at Ernie Banks' request. Uh, Ernie came to him and said, could you write a song about Wrigley Field? And I'm 95% sure Eddie knew nothing about the field. He just got like a postcard of Wrigley Field and just started pointing out things Eek. that he saw. <laughs> Ivy and a scoreboard and, hey, it looks like the players wear blue. And that's what I thought. <laughs> that's just, first of all, that's just cruel. Um, yeah. Aside from that, President Obama is a Sox fan. Uh, oh, he's a Sox and- fan, not a Cubs guy. He is a Sox fan, and okay. that brings me to one point I'm enjoying about this as a Cubs fan. It puts White Sox fans in an awful conundrum. Uh, they either have to cheer for their division rival, the Indians, or they have to cheer for the Cubs. And I guarantee 95% of them out there will cheer for the Indians uh, because they hate the Cubs. Well, they have every right to hate the Cubs. I mean, I don't know. Vito, what do you do when the Yankees are winning World Series? You go underground? Yeah, the only time I ever rooted for the Yankees in a World Series was against, <laughs> was against the Mets. our division rival, the Phillies. That's the only time I wasn't going to root for That makes you a rival. piece of fucking garbage. Yeah, that's... That seriously tall. makes you the biggest piece of shit. You're fucked up. Because I'll always root national over. Because at least you've been beat by the best. When you beat my team, I want to see you want to win it all. That's what a true... And you got to remember, fan is short for fanatic, right? Mm-hmm. What fan? What attic? Where's the attic? Top. Top of the what? House. Right. And what do you do? What What is What is a house also? A home. home. Yeah. Yeah. A home. And what? There's no place like home, right? No. Yeah. No place like home. Yeah, and where was she from? Kansas. Kansas, right? Yeah. Where do people from Kansas go? When they get a little money for themselves. Where do they go? What's their big city that they Kansas go to? Kansas City? No, they're going to bypass that shit. Oh. And go where? Chicago. Yeah, Sweet Home Chicago. <laughs> Sweet Home Chicago. And what's the Northsiders team? The Cubs. And it all comes together, doesn't it, right? Team. Yeah, Your team, the Cubs. Team. I see it clearly now. I mean, yeah, it was confusing before. but And that's why Eddie Vedder wrote that song. Thank you, you know? Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. That's what that is about. It's about the ivy. It's, it's about the pinstripes, okay? It's about the old scoreboard. I love that you scoreboard. Know? It's about that whole thing going on. There's people on the roof watching the game. It's amazing. I should go there. <laughs> Could you? I, I took uh, the kids a few years ago. We went to Chicago, and they were playing against Milwaukee. So it's close. A lot of Milwaukee fans came. I'm going to start fucking knocking out Milwaukee fans. <laughs> I immediately was going like this. First of all, fuck you. <laughs> Good. And second of all, you know, I'm like, how could you run down Chicago? You're from Milwaukee. I'm yelling at this guy. And then I'm like, wait, I'm not from Chicago. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm just in Chicago. But it was, it was just annoying me yeah. seeing the visitors starting st- uh, shit. You when, shouldn't. If you're a visitor, just, no. just be cool. Mm. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? No, it's not. 
Speaking about somebody, we got to ask to be cool. Look who it is. Hard Rock Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Benning's yeah. Benning Ten. Yeah. So I, I'd like to clarify something. This is a third part of a double or nothing bet. So, Chris, if, if the Cubs win, which I'm okay with, you get nothing. You just don't owe me the two. what would then be $480. The Throw me a couple, you're taking the fun out of this. Throw me a couple of Fine. Throw a couple of Fine, a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks, but if Chris. they lose, no, I'll give you a hundred bucks, but you then, if they lose, you owe me 500 no more double or nothing. Chris, Easy you money. stole fizzy lifting drinks. You get nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I said good day, sir. Can't wait to collect. I will let you collect $100. My sweet, sweet cubby's going all the way. Sorry, Cleveland. Bunch of losers. Wow. Well, he's not wrong with saying that the Indians are losers. I don't, listen, I, I hope <laughs> either. You, I'm, I'm okay with either team on this. I don't care. That's what's amazing. Both these teams are losers. That's what's kind of. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting. The cucking ends in Chicago with this series. And that's another thing. The Cubs have had to sit around and watch the White Sox dance in the fucking streets. Yeah. I did not know Obama. I kind of considered him, and maybe it sounds, you know, because he, I thought of him more as a Cubs guy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he came out as a White Sox guy a while, a long time ago. I don't follow politics. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the, uh, well, I, Ron, you know, I, I think you and I discussed, you have a tie to this this current Cleveland team. You have a, an old boss tie. Yeah, I forgot who it was, though. I mean, you keep bringing it up. <laughs> he was your GM at NEW at one point. His son is the general manager of the Cubs. Say his name. Of, of uh, I'm sorry, of Cleveland. His last name is Chernoff. He's now the guy who runs the WFAN in New York. His son yeah, I, is the I, GM. He never was my GM. He was, yeah, there, he was, before, he was there before I, I was there. I don't know. I think no, he might I have been know. it. Or what about, uh, it was Free FM in the free days, one of those two. No. No, I so. forgot what the, that fucking Ham and Eggers name was, too. When he was <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was a lot of them. Yeah. There were a bunch of people. Well, not Chernoff, because he, you know, did his own, own thing with the with the fan. But the guy at Free FM, um, you know, he rode the Howard train as far as he could. And then that was, you know, when Howard left, he had nothing to add to the fucking Hello. yeah discussion. Chiasano. Yeah. I mean, I could have made Vito fucking GM of that thing. And they're like, hey, you're really bringing in the profits, Vito. You should that have. would have been awesome. <laughs> Johnny, we got to announce Thanksgiving soon. Are we still doing that? Johnny is the one who said that we, and he kind of said it in a mean way. I don't want you guys to do one-on-one here. I didn't. Really? Not say you said, it. You said that's did. a comedy club thing now. I felt like, oh, Johnny, you're a little mad at us. Nope, not at all. I just think it has its own life that you guys have it living, and I think that we can come up with something new and original for Thanksgiving. All right, remember whose pants am I wearing was an excellent <laughs> idea. Shot down by your boss, Johnny Gogo. A, he's not my boss. B, he can go fuck himself. We're uh, wearing pants well, that night. Well, it sounds like he's on the road, huh, if you're talking that way. <laughs> it sounds like the cat's away and the mouse can start saying shit. <laughs> Johnny, are you a Trump guy like me? No. <laughs> I've not been a Trump. I'm not a Trumpster. Uh, you know how a lot of people are saying that Hillary has this thing won? I've been putting together some analytics, mm. some polling information, oh. mm. and I have Trump winning 50 of the states. <laughs> and I also have him winning, believe it or not, 91% of the popular vote. How, so, wow. How are you coming up with these numbers? I try to under, uh, explain it to you, but you're a girl. Let me just put it. Maybe you've heard of math, <laughs> mathematics. It just doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I'll tell you what doesn't make sense. The people stop working with an abacus because that's what I work with. And I slide those little cereal things over from left to right. And I'm counting it all up. He's going to win 91% of the vote. Uh, and, 50 of the states. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if that's possible. Well, you'll see come November 8th <laughs> at midnight <laughs> when I, when he makes the announcement. The stroke of midnight. Chris, you are, you are going to Trump Tower that night, right? I'll be there. I'll be there all night long. Vito, are you going? As long as my phone. Yeah, I'll list. be there also. One Trump you, brothers. One of you will be doing Twitter, the other. Snapchat. <laughs> We'll Snapchat, we'll snap time. Whatever happened to you being the... Uh, Scope. I'll be scoping, he'll be snapping. 
You just okay. said 20. You just said the opposite. Stop drinking while we're talking. You're, you're like Trump right now. No more. Since you're Thursday. Trump guy. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Vito, you're a Trump guy? Love him. Gail, you're a Trump guy? I'm against the patriarchy, so I'm voting for Hillary. You know, here's the thing. Topple the patriarchy. Here's why I, here's another thing. How could Trump lose to a girl? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's <laughs> Donald Trump. He's a well, man. Well, I mean, if it was a foot race, sure. I mean, he would win. I saw this thing. Uh, somebody sent it to me. I think it was off the Facebook, uh, Twitter accounts. But it said, on, no on November 8th, pussy grabs back. <laughs> yes. And that made me laugh. <laughs> love it i like any time that now just people are saying pussy and it's acceptable. <laughs> oh i love how much people are yeah. saying pussy it really makes me happy that's why i wrote a note to my parents and i go and you hit me for what reason <laughs> and i have to watch my language for what reason because i was i was before my time <laughs> i think that hillary should change her logo to just a vagina dentata that's pretty cool now, I talked to my uh, dad the other day about the election, and he had my favorite line. He goes, well, you're either going to end up with horseshit or manure. It's up to you which one you want. He hates them both now. Really? He hates the pussy grab. He thing. didn't like the pussy grab. I knew no. he wouldn't. No, he didn't like that at all. Horseshit or manure is fucking hilarious, though. <laughs> And uh, someday we'll go all the way. And someday we'll go all the way. Today's it. Baseballs have uh, <laughs> stitches and they throw them to gloves. <laughs> to gloves. Just so stupid. Divey is magic. <laughs> One time Ernie Banks said, let's play three. <laughs> you know, it is like that. It is more like an Irish bar song, isn't it? You yeah. know what? If it was sang by someone who, it's just like he was right, more if it gentle. Was an old guy. Yeah. yeah. He was a little gentle with his approach, but you could probably sing it in that kind of drunken Irish way. It would have been way. better if his song was, I can remember why they put lights on the field. In the old days, you just played dig games. Uh, you know, he should have done a he should have done a Pearl Jam song about it. Yeah, there goes our man. Bye, Connor. Sarah Connor. I'm starting to call him. There goes your man. Play that every time he has to leave early. He's a great kid. He's a good dude. Yeah. Who else is working today? Marcus Hook is back here with me. What happened to Nick at night? Nick. I wanted to talk to him about the problem. Nick at night is here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's it. Yeah, he only does two days. I wanted to talk to Nick at night about this. I don't know whether you guys heard this story, but I got it from Tom Rhodes. That uh, So Tom Rhodes is our guest that day, right? Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, Tom stays with Jeffrey. I believe that they have a, an affair. <laughs> so <laughs> Nick does his job, comes into a say to our guest, can I get you anything? And Tom says, I'd like a coffee because he's up all night and he needs coffee. Mm -hmm. So we start to leave. Gary is like, hey, excuse me. What? Am I not sitting here? And he says to him, you're supposed to ask every guest what they want. And then he goes like this. Oh. And what is your name? Oh, he and took his name. Took his name down and then struck a line through it. <laughs> Holy shit, Jeffrey. What the what? fuck? He seriously took his name? That's a bold move when yeah. you say to someone who you perceive as beneath you, what is your name? It's I like, just like the sound of that is. Nobody talks down to Nick at night. It's very aggressive. He's such a sweet boy. Um. He, so Rhodes tells me the story as a way of apologizing, and instead I just cracked up, <laughs> and I said I'll talk to Nick. And then Nick went to you, and he was nervous about it. Uh, yeah, Nick was in the booth with me the whole time, freaking out. And I was like, dude, calm down. It's no big deal. So finding out that that's actually what happened, I feel so bad that I didn't realize it was a lot worse than it. Yes, than you're, it a, you're a terrible, uh, what do you be called? Administrator? Uh, Mentor? Team, Supervisor. Team captain? <laughs> team captain. You're that's a bad captain. captain. TC. You're supposed to look out for these interns. Protect Nick at night. And I know Marcus Hook has all kinds of ideas. You never put him on the show. I say to you all the time, I go, what do we got with Marcus Hook? You're like, nothing. And I see him outside, and he's like, 
hey, did you hear about my other idea? And I know, I go, no, it's a good idea. What I want to do is have a meeting with you, HR, and the interns. Please. And not all of us are going to walk into that meeting. Not all of us are going to walk out. I don't. I can be a better team captain. I don't. Oh, I don't and someday we'll go no, all, all the, the way. way. Hey, someday we'll go all the way. As if the people of Seattle didn't hate that man enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. You know what? You do a song for the Mariners. Chicago didn't make your ass rich. Seattle did. He loves. He loves our Cubbies. That's all I can say. Uh, I R. saw a uh, vetter. On some, I think the show is called Icons. And you know that big blonde surfer who s- surfs the giant waves in Hawaii? He's like the most famous. Uh, yeah. Laird Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton. Laird Hamilton. Um, you, you snaked him. Uh, so he's staying with Laird. And he's very happy and proud of Laird. And then he presents Laird with a painting that he did of Laird. And it's just a giant painting, a giant wave with a little surfer on it. And just see Larry going like, oh, thanks. Because <laughs> when someone gives you a painting, it better be a good painting. Yeah, it's got to be really good. I mean, it's a really a personal thing. I think giving a painting is is a very uncomfortable thing to do because you're saying, put this up in your home and look at it every day. And the next time I come here, I'm going to be like, where's the painting? Mm-hmm. That's ve- that is a very controlling gift. It's like giving someone a pet. Yeah. Well, so you feel like it should ever be done? I don't think you should give a painting as a gift unless it is something you're a hundred percent sure, you know, that person would want. Well, I'll tell you something I'm 100% about. Uh, Louis C.K. dropped Barry Crimmins' special last night. And what he wrote, well, this is the amazing thing. What he wrote, I've been trying to tell about Barry for a couple of years. And I'm like, damn, Louis C.K. did it better in an email than I've been able to explain it. It was so incredibly sweet, but more importantly, so accurate. You're right. Yeah. Like it was, I was choked up reading it. Do you know I wrote back to Barry? I got choked up reading that. Really? Yeah. Uh, so the special is out. Whatever threatens you, uh, it's available now on um, louisck.net. Uh, I've seen it. You've already seen it, Gail. Yes. And I said this to Barry. I found the special be so good that I forgot that I knew Barry a couple times in it was just focusing on uh, on comedy. But we have Mr. Barry Crimmins on the line right now. Barry! Buddy, yeah! congratulations! Congratulations, Barry! Oh, you know, I'm doing so well. I just bought you a painting, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's of you. See, oh. <laughs> uh, I was cringing while you were saying that because Fez gave me paintings before. But, uh, you have to know the person very well. That's all I'm Good. saying. You, you can you can do it. You just have to know that person would want it. And I think okay. they make my bathroom look fabulous. <laughs> 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 and it's absorbent too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, Barry, congratulations. Whatever threatens you, uh, Louis C.K. put it out yesterday on his website. But not only that, the email that he wrote and the things that he wrote about you. It, was, it had to be overwhelming for you. Yes, it was. Well, particularly because he tied uh, he tied Kevin in with it, and you know, uh, I don't do. I only release specials when the Cubs and the, uh, <laughs> and the Indians are in the World Series. <laughs> did, did you guys consider the uh, pushing that back at all? Yeah, we, yeah, we like? did, but it was just uh, we didn't. When we were making the decision, we didn't know when all the arrangements were going to be for Kevin or whatever. So it was another week, you know. Then we it just, you know, it had to come out. And and by the way, you know, Kevin was knew all about it and was thrilled with it. And you know, I mean, I don't mean to be one. Oh, Kevin, well, I want you to buy my special, you know. But right. but we were, you know, such dear friends, and he was. I'm sure he would have been. You know, not only fine, he would have been assertively saying, put it out, you know, so. Well, Kevin Meany uh, worked with us here. He was part of the Jay Thomas show, and I think for like a year and a half or 
two years, so we would see him all the t- uh, all the time. Uh, obviously, it's you know, sweetest man in the world it has been repeated time and time again, but it is true. But at one time, I got in a conversation with him about Barry, and this is years ago, and the love and the great things and respect that he had for Barry went on and on and on. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I know that he was excited that you had this special coming out. He was, you know, he's just one of my dearest friends. It's just getting to the point now when somebody dies, I feel like I should call up somebody and talk to him, and the first five people I think of are also dead. Right, yeah. (laughs) But uh, getting getting to be that stage of the game, except he went, you know, way too soon, and he just had such, you know, he was such a a force field, you know. He just he was just, you know, he seemed like a boundless and endless, uh, you know, and, and undepletable source of incredibly positive and you know wonderful energy, and so it's just the, you know really shocking. I was just having this conversation with Doug Benson the other day. Because he's like, man, isn't it amazing the people that come out and say good things about Kevin Meeting, celebrities and stuff? And I'm like, we got to treat this as a little more precious than we are. Because everybody's got that Kevin Meany bit that I remember. And in our in our family, when you were a kid, Gail, how long did we do that? To touch the fail of cotton? Yeah. We did it constantly. <laughs> and I never even once brought that up to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that yeah. that my kids had a running joke based on one of his He was bits. He was infectious. I mean, yeah. he really was. I mean, he just... I was at his 60th birthday. He was playing in Rochester. It's about an hour and a half from my house. And so I went up and surprised him and introed him. And he just killed. He was yeah. just unbelievable. And as everybody was walking out, and I'm glad I really kind of made myself, made it, let it soak in. And he, everybody wanted to talk to Kevin anyway. So, I, you know, I just let, let him deal with the public. And I just watched them. And people are out walking out saying, that's not right. And, you know, and yeah. songs and whatever. I mean, he just... He just really, you know, seared himself into right. an audience's heart. Yeah, that uh, there is. There are times that we don't realize how powerful and how much we need silly. You know what I mean? Yeah. That silly can be particularly uh, courageous. Silly, silly. Cur- yeah. you know, like bold, the silly. Which yeah. is what he was. Yeah, that's really right. That's really, really true. Not, not silly that will fold up its tent at the first, <laughs> at the first resistance. Yeah. But that it redoubles its strength, and he just, you know, I mean, you know, he used to, he used to sing the months of the year when things weren't going well. <laughs> January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then you know, and the audience is going like, "Stop it!" And go like, "Okay, now the days of the week: Monday, Tuesday." <laughs> Then he do the numbers. Eventually, he got to the vegetables. <laughs> you just when you know when he was fighting it out with an audience, he just got so fucking hilarious. And there was nobody who had the back of the room when there were comics around just dying more than me. Right. You just you know you just it was, he's just the best. So you've got to make sure that not only do you go and it's only five bucks on Louis's web- website. Uh, Barry special, which is absolutely tremendous, but take the time to see if you can find that uh, email that Louis wrote yeah. uh, about you know Barry and what Barry meant to him, and then what Kevin yeah. meant to Barry and if Louis. If you go to the new, Louis page and you go to news, it'll be the top, the top thing on that page. Uh, it was just extraordinary. It was extraordinary writing, and, and, and his his analysis of Kevin was so. You know, perfect and loving. Yeah, and really. You know, I, I wish that that's all. You know, if, if it's going to be quoted anywhere, I hope that that's what they pull out of it because it was such a brilliant and loving and and a completely accurate remembrance of a, you know a Hall of Fame comic. Well, you know, the other thing that that he said so well is the thing that I've credited to Barry long before because I heard it from people when I lived in Florida. I heard. About Barry Crimmins and the uh, the way that he ran the scene, and I, I, I'll never forget the first time. I think Barry checked in to say, "Hey, I listened to your show." I literally like leaned back away 
from the, the screen because he, and, and you responded and said uh, uh, yeah and you said uh, I said it online and, I, and you said I was name checked by a legend and I go <laughs> I right back at you bro uh, because you know there's very few people but it's not only Barry's career but the comedians who come out of Boston to this day kind of live that moral code that Barry set up for comedy and they don't have that in Chicago and they don't have that in New York and they certainly don't have that in LA. Why did I guess you were going to say LA? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. the, the fact where you would go, but, you know, San Francisco, Houston, yeah. you know, there's some towns. Yeah, there know? are, yeah. but you, uh, you set up, um, and, and, that got laid out by Louis C.K. in this. I mean, he did a, an unbelievable job yeah. of talking well, I mean, about... That was, and, yeah. You know, it was such a... My friend Paul Kozlowski uh, was a great comic, and he ran the fake gallery in L.A. for years. It was a great place. He said to me, Wow, you're the definition of bittersweet today, aren't you? Yeah. And that was it was, and it was funny all weekend. It was still kind of signing, and not, not only signing off on... Uh, uh, stuff for the special, but also when I got word about Kevin, I just started contacting people so they wouldn't hear from some dope on the social media because that's the new drill you have to do now. You know, before before that dam breaks, you have to try to get to as many innocents as possible. So I was doing that all weekend, and I talked to a lot of people, and it was it was quite emotional. But I kind of had to keep my shit together and. Then when Louis uh, contacted me yesterday and said, okay, it's gone live, not everything hit me. Yeah. I mean, in an hour or two, or really just, you know, I, can, I, I still can't believe he's gone. I just can't believe he's gone. No, and I, I even said to you, he had lost all that weight, you know, and then a heart attack comes after that. Yeah. It seemed crazy. Well, um, he took any, yeah, he took good care of himself. He yeah. Was, you know, there's just nothing you can... Uh, you know, I know people got to be looking at me going like, you're still around? Yeah, it's a very weird thing. That that, that kind of guilt comes into it. Anybody who's um, lived a little rougher than yeah. Kevin. But, but it's also saying, you know, what, this whole thing of life such a goddamn crapshoot. Uh, you know? our, li our lives are cellophane in a bonfire. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're ready to go quick at any moment. Yeah, that's it. But, you know, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of his work that's going to be out there forever and will remain in the pantheon and he will you know he will stand up as this good glowing you know um, example of just a tremendous incredibly talented uh, you know generous kind and and just funny performer you know just just one of the all-time greats and uh, and I mean I've been saying it for years I you know I go see a lot of my friends I see a lot of comics or whatever but whenever I see Kevin he just absolutely blows. I mean, I really would have like singular, you know, praise and excitement. I would go see him anytime I had a chance. He's like, he's on the same list as Stephen Wright or my friend Brian Kiley. There's a few people, but yeah. uh, he's just. And then that show he did, it was his 60th birthday, and you know, he had reasons to be. You know, he was. You know, I mean, it's it's tough being a 60 year old road comic. Let sure. me tell you, and. Uh, and you know some of that was would wear on him at times, but he took that stage, and you wouldn't have a fucking hint. Yeah. Not a hint. Well, I remember uh, being down at the stand where you're really working in front of young people, and yeah. everybody at the stand said that Kevin was beloved and crushed every time. You know, because yeah. a, a club like the stand, you go in, you work out material, whatever. Yeah. But he hit the he hit the stage hard every time. Every time. Uh, Barry's uh, special, Whatever Threatens You, is out on uh, louisck.net. Louis doesn't alert the press. He just he just puts his stuff out there. It's the strangest release of all the things that he's done. I mean, he did this with Horace and Pete. Yeah. You yeah. know? Where it's yeah. just, boom, it's up. Yeah. Um, it's a very interesting. Well, I mean, you know, it helps that he has that. Very large mailing list, and and then of course he's you know he's a wonderful writer, isn't he? I mean, what it's unbelievable mind. what he wrote. I mean, I'm, of course he's a great writer of his act, but you know, you now you look at you know you look at Horace and Pete, you look at you, you look at you know just just him writing an email. He's he's a wonderful uh, uh, 
uh, word uh, craftsman. Oh, well, we're we're talking about this, the, his latest show that uh, he's done with Padma Adlon, Better Things. Yeah, it might be the best project yet. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe that you keep saying that project yeah. after project. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, he, and he just works so hard. It's funny working on him with this. You know, there were times when I kind of wanted to know what was going on, but I know how busy he is. He's the, he's the only guy I've ever worked with, so I have to check the AP wire to figure out whether or not it's a good time to text him. Yeah. You know, and in general, he was there. <laughs> uh, Barry Special, Whatever Threatens You, available now on net. Thanks so much. Kansas for the people I love out there, and I'm very proud of it, and and so thankful to Louie and everyone that worked on it, and all the clubs and people, and and you guys for having me on and helping me promote the appearances that I was making. That's to all get it together. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. No, thank you, buddy, and we're real, real proud of you. It's Congratulations, Barry. Uh, Thanks, th- and I hope everybody downloads it. Everybody oh. download it. I'm behind this thing so much, it's as, it's as if I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Barry Crimmins. Uh, whatever threatens you, available now at louisck.net. louisck.net. Uh, it's just a... It's just a great special. It just really is, it's, man. It's so fantastic. I'm so happy that it is out in the world now. Everybody go go download it because it really is terrific. Why don't we take a break and we'll be right back. This is Bennington. Um, it's the Bennington Show on a Monday. Back at home on a Monday. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. A uh, G-Man, what's happening? Hey, cockle buddies. Hey, buddy. Hey, Ronnie B. I'm a little behind, man. I'm listening on the app, but I just had to call in. I am so fucking stoked for Comedy 101. Well, you know Those what? Three. We might we might make some changes in the lineup because uh, it seems like a night for D.L. Ugly. I'd love to have D.L. Ugly come in and fill in. <laughs> so not all the uh, judges... Uh, are there, despite what we've heard from Don Wicky Wicklin. But you know how this goes. It doesn't matter who is the judges and who's there. These things kill time and time again. Hey, it's the Bennington Show, 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. Um, Gail, what's the big story for you today? Uh, to me, the big story is up on the iBang, there is a dick pic tutorial that was put out by Esquire and to me it it feels like it feels like now we're at the thing where it's like the snake that's like eating itself in its Mm -hmm. tail like now our culture is like collapsing in on itself like something about this was so weird to me what is the what is the premise so the premise is this girl for Esquire puts out how to make your dick pics great And she's giving you, like, all the tips of, like, the angles and when to send them. And it is, to me, it was, like, the most surreal, weird shit ever. Like, who who actually needs this, first of all? Well, I'll say this. The girl giving advice is very hot. I will give you that. That she is very attractive. And she's got, like, a cool style. Yeah, she's got Which is why I kind of was, like, intrigued and clicked on it. But is this... Is this a thing that people needed a tutorial on? Is this something? Well, I think Esquire is just trying to be vice these days. You know, they've backed out off and they're going in a different direction from when they went. From, right. They're like, I don't know. We're doing shitty. Vice is doing grace. Why don't we vice it up? <laughs> what kind of dangerous other countries could we go to? Look, Esquire. Yeah. Esquire used to do two things. Tell you what ties and shoes to get. How to order food and what stereo equipment went great with your new tie. I also think that this girl is straight steering you wrong. Like, I would say 99% of the time a dick pic is probably not a good idea anyway. Like, whenever you think that you're at the level to dick pic someone, you probably aren't. And some of the. Generally, it's a bad idea even to send a dick pic to your wife. Yeah, it's like, what am I going to do with get this? out there. And women <laughs> yeah. aren't as visually turned on as men. Hey, no. My dick? Yeah, that's another thing. It's I think most women do not need a visual cue 
to feel that way. That's just not normally how women operate. She also goes on to this whole thing of like, don't be afraid of a funny dick pic where it's a you funny like, dick pic. like you do like dick in a box or she says, no, no, draw just, things on your dick that could be funny. First of all, no one should be laughing at your dick under any <laughs> circumstances. In, in fact, she gave one example, which she writes on a, some sort of a gourd. Chris, you know what that is now? Uh, no, where she's no. just like, come over, but you know, comes with a you. Get it's it. Written on the dick. Like I can't ima- I can't imagine there being women out there who are just like, you know, I wasn't I was on the fence about this guy. But then he sent me this adorable dick pic. And he's in. And now and now uh now it's in. Is that like just like what Tinder is his dick pic? I don't know because I don't have it, but is that like a dick pic? I heard you can't send um dick pics through Tinder. Like there's no way to like attach a photo to send a dick pic to someone. Like uh, a text message. Uh, what it recognizes it's dick, right? I didn't know they don't allow you to send um, the attached photos to your. Text. Oh, so like in their like DMs, essentially, yeah. there's no like pick option. Wait a minute. I can't believe I didn't think of this. So the other day, I tell you, I'm coming in here on a Saturday. Yeah, Chris and I are going to be doing stuff. Now, this story that I tell you is 100 percent true. What? I am a couple minutes late. There's a crane. On the goddamn Fifth Avenue holding everything up. I'm so pissed off. So I get in here and Chris is sitting there at that chair and the back and, and to your back, it's glass. And I just see Chris with his phone out, just whipping like this with his phone. And I'm like, is this son of a bitch on Tinder? Yo, know, he's going through, and I'm not making this up. Four pictures a second. That's what? how fast yeah. he's what? going. You're on Tinder. So, Two, are you swiping right or left? <laughs> I, I, I've i never seen anything swipe so fast. So I go, dude, you're on Tinder? And then he says, no. What were you viewing? I was on Pornhub.com, and you can swipe through porn scenes to see what's half coming up in the next scene. No, that's not what it was. Uh, that was is it? not what it was, because I saw girls' faces. Yeah, there's girls' faces. No, I didn't Chris, see anybody. And you were moving Let me faster. see those apps right now. Let me... No. He would not think that that's faces. I Most of faces. those are bad shots. You are on Tinder, dude. Admit it. That's not what that is. <laughs> way is that what you saw i'm swiping through it look it's changing now that day you told us that you're on jizz.com you jizz it's the basically the same thing you can, you can swipe through all of it you were There's swiping phases. much faster than that and what are you looking for you're at work and you're going to be working for the next four hours with me why would you be doing that? i had to clear the head show I had to clear the head before the head had to fucking go through it you show your apps masturbate? if you're so i if wasn't you're so going confident. i wasn't going to master why can't we see your apps look just let us see your your apps. Look, there's apps. Let me see them. Bring it Let over. me fucking swipe Tinder through that shit. There. Let me swipe for them. I actually don't even know what the icon looks like. Somebody tell me. Here, look. It's got to be a giant C. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get a good look at these apps. Oh, what a shitty fucking thing it's this bro- can't. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait, hey, you're on Weight Watchers? All right, now I just saw a girl dressed as Batman sucking a dick. <laughs> what kind of weird shit are you into? What's wrong with a woman wearing a mask? Let me see he the likes apps. cosplay. Let me see the apps. Why are you embarrassed? So what? You're on Tinder. Not on Tinder. Just admit it. I like pornography. I don't think so. No, think you don't. Tinder. It was probably I Tinder. I don't like porn. I don't know why you won't just give it to me. That's like my favorite thing is to like look at other people's Tinder. And then I try to, and I'm really good at it too. Like I really try to match people with people I think they would like. You're a matchmaker. I'm a matchmaker. I'll t- this could be a service. I'll Tinder for you. Doesn't it have a certain term in the Jewish community? It's... um a blank, a something, because I saw it yeah, in a movie. There is like these, a matchmaker. These term. Jewish women go around and they go, so your son is, and they have pictures of the girls in the community. 
is I guess Tinder was destructive and uh, J date. This I that's think co- that's actually what a yenta is. A yenta. Told, that's yeah. where yenta is. Yeah. Yenta is like an older woman who goes around and I guess gets in everybody's business. That's me. I'm a Yenta. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And I'm going to start this new business where I Tinder for you. And this is the song. Ready? I'll Tinder for you. I'll, I'll Tinder for you. I love that. I'll Tinder for you. You're not into it at all, Chris? Are you still trying you to guys are just <laughs> You would lie in your ass off about I know. Are, he's probably I, I deleting lie. his app right now. I'm not Let's, deleting anything. He, so let me say this. A guest just texted me. <laughs> I walk down the hall. I see Chris swipe, 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 swipe like a crazy person. And I did not see nude bodies. I saw faces. That's Tinder, dude. I was on Pornhub. I don't have a problem with you being on Tinder. I, why would I have a Why would I have a problem with being on this Tinder? This is like the opposite conversation if a parent had walked in on a kid. <laughs> it's no, porn, man. It's where it's porn. Because he'd rather be known as a man who masturbates more at than work. A man, at work, more than a man who dates. Which I why? Have, have why? Work. Just let me see the Tinder. I'm a yenta. I understand you're a yenta. There's no Tinder, dude. You don't need Tinder. You want to find somebody. Yeah. Let Gail do it for you. Oh. I'll tender for ya. <laughs> I'll tender for ya. What are you hiding? There is nothing to hide. I live an open lifestyle. Look, Don doesn't even have the fucking balls to write back to me. Unbelievable. I'll tender for ya. We don't produce that. <laughs> He has never produced any piece of production. He doesn't do that kind of shit at all. What do you do? Load stuff, Vito? Is that your dream job? Yeah, I'm, I've been... I got moved to Load Boy for a little bit here. But I think our boy's coming back soon. I've been loading shows. <laughs> I'll tend to fall you yeah. up. No, it's stuck in my fucking head. I can't get out of there. Uh, hey, do you want to hear this this weird thing that I saw this weekend? And tell me if you guys have seen this before. So I'm in a bathroom of a bar. And there is a bar soap that is mounted on the wall. Like, it, like it, soap? No, it's a bar soap that is mounted on a metal, like, pole. And it hangs next to the sink. I don't know if this is a newfangled thing, but it looked very old timey in design. But remember, we were talking about how millennials hate bar soap. It really, really grossed me out because it was like slimy from everybody's hands. Sure. Have you ever seen this before? Is no this I- like an old timey thing? Is it just is it just free on the on this bar, or is it attached to like the rope or something? It's on a like the the bar soap is screwed onto a metal spike that hangs by the sink so you can rub it like Sounds this. Sounds like S&M. It looked so weird. And when I got closer to it and saw what it was, I was so skeeved out because it was all wet and slimy. And it was a boy-girl bathroom, by the way. So it had boy-girls, boy hands and girl hands on Unisex? it. Unisex? Yeah. Try to look this thing up because I want to know. Were you at somebody's house? No, this was in a in a like a a fancy bar's restroom. It wasn't that fancy. It was just a nice bar. It was not a dive, so it was a <laughs> new experience for me. So it's like I I don't know like, like something. Yeah, like that. Look, okay, click the yellow one because that's up close. It's what like the that, fuck? but it's like a slimy. But it's a ball. piece. Of, it is a piece of soap. Is all it is. Yeah. But then you can't steal it. Yeah, and it's screwed onto the wall. Right, but don't act like you can't take a, a knife and cut off that bar of soap. Yeah, and be gone with it. But is that the point of it? Like, is it for convenience? Yeah. Is it so you don't have to pick it up? Is it so no, you don't steal it? It's so you don't steal it. Is it an old timey thing? It was. I don't just know. That straight, sure looks pretty goddamn new. It looks straight vile to me. Like it was so gross. And I know Vito agrees with me because he also is a. Is anti bar soap. I'd, I'd rather get pink eye. I'd rather not wash my hand, have <laughs> shit it, all over my hands, and get pink eye. Because I didn't want to use. I wouldn't use it because I like saw the slime all yeah. over it. So I had to dig through my bag, and thank God I had, you know, hand sanitizer. I don't have a problem with the slime. I really don't. It's it's of course it's, you don't. It's so, yeah, can I tell you something? Yeah. 
You'd back your ass in that thing and just be sitting there looking at your fucking Tinder pics one after another. I think it was like, I saw that it said something like French. Like, I don't know if it's a French design or something. I didn't want to get too close to it because I swear to God, it really skeeved me out. And it was like little slimy bubbles all over it. Where well, those people are clean just bubbles. Like, this yeah, but from, the soap. from other people had like stroked it. <laughs> like something about that motion too. It's just like. Just the fact yeah, that like someone jerking a little think, wall soap off. First of all, I would never, <laughs> like, that's all, what you would have I, to do. I would never <laughs> jerk it. I would probably slide it back. And you would do one of like these. Like I was starting to fire. Chris, no, you would. You would do a little jerk. Yeah, I do it both hands. <laughs> no, this is how Chris jerks off. Like he's trying to get some that's, fiddling going. That's what he does when he looks at his Tinder. <laughs> Just let me Tinder Jesus for you, Christ, dude. What did you do? Backed into the console. Back then, the whole goddamn thing was shaking. <laughs> Why can't you just chill the fuck out for a couple minutes? I'm chill. I'm chill. No, oh, he's crazy. I want one of these for my house now. Oh. I only use bar soap. I don't like liquid soap. Why do you not like liquid soap? I, I, I don't want to get back into this, but it's just like... There's something so gross about that, particularly in a public restroom. If I was in like a get, like I was a guest of someone's home and they had bar soap, it'd be less gross to me. But like, just everybody's been rubbing on that soap. Yeah. And you, how are you also going to wash your hands? Liquid, my friend. Yeah. Like a common liquid soap. That's like disgusting. the way it is gross. Like, it's just disgusting. <laughs> uh, Al in Maryland. Right. Yeah. Hey. They take off speakerphone here. Hey, I'm not going to stand, but uh, Black Mirror was out uh, over the weekend. I wonder if you caught any of it. I had too much football this weekend. I don't yeah, have lot, time lot to keep up with every show. I, I did not make it to. The other day, Kyle wrote to me about some show that I should be watching. And I actually snapped at him. I go, I can't watch everything. I can't do. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm getting 45 minutes to sleep at night because of all the shows and people want me to watch. I watched the first three episodes of Black Mirror season three. And? So far, first fell, episode. Fell off? It fell off, yes. And But the second episode, you should not watch under any circumstances. Specifically, Ron Bennington yeah. should not watch. It's fucked up. It's a fucked up episode. And it's something like you know him to already be yeah. creeped out by? Yeah. Is it robot Is it, related? No. Is it robot. buried alive? No. Someone's stuck in a really tight pipe. Someone with like a cord. Or... I've out by saying that. <laughs> Is it somebody's cord wrapped around their oh neck? Oh my God, no. that happened to me when I was born. My mom actually says this to me. So we know this kid who's not feeling well and they're like, they want to take him to the Philadelphia Children's Hospital. That's where you take special cases. Eastside Dave went there when he was uh, dealing with stuff. And she goes, you were there. And I go, what? She goes, that you know, bump on the top of your head that you were born with because you're my, my, you know, your little thing right here. Yeah. I was, uh, it, it's sealed too quick. And so I got a bump right there, right? Like a uh, rhino horn. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You didn't even know that does uh, that. Uh, you got that. Let me see yours. And you see mine. Yeah. Go mine. No, right there. Same spot. Yeah. So that's why rhinos are our spirit animal. <laughs> so. <laughs> This bump, and because that I had the cord and I didn't get oxygen for so long, uh, I had spots on me. And then my mom said this, and I'm going to use, she's an older woman, so this is her vernacular. She goes, they told me, because the amount of oxygen that you didn't get in your brain, you could be retarded or a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I, <laughs> there's nothing like that. <laughs> that doesn't make, I think, how would anyone's, like, being deprived of oxygen make you a genius? I don't know. I don't think that it would. And I said, well, I didn't get either. She goes, yeah, but closer to genius. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go, not really. She goes, and then she yelled at me, you're doing what you want. <laughs> you know how few people get to do what they want? And I go like this. I gave it a full 10 seconds. And I go, put pop on. And I'm going to bring up Trump. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then she said to me some stuff going on with my dad. She goes, I don't know, you know, maybe it's because he's 90. 
I go, yeah, maybe that's a reason not to feel good. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe that's a reason that your knees hurt. It could be. It could be that. <laughs> um, but anyway, so she got into that. So then she tells me, because I'm like, hey, I didn't know I was at the Philadelphia Children's Hospital. She goes, yeah, when you're like two or three years old. And um, they were thinking they might have to shave that bump down on your head oh. to take it down. But they said that your hair would cover it. And then she goes like this. And your doctor was Dr. Hope, who you called Dr. Dope. <laughs> and then she goes, <laughs> and the neighbors in Chester, PA, would come over and say, Ronnie, what's your, what's your doctor's name? And I would say Dr. Dope. And then they would laugh their asses off. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a great story. I can't believe it hasn't come up yet. First of all, I was glad I was getting some laughs. <laughs> Two, tell me if you're going to go shave off the top of my head. At the ch- and then to say... You know, you had the spots all over your forehead. I'm like, what are you talking about spots? She goes, no, you know, from lack of oxygen. You had them on the top of your head. <laughs> you know. What? Why didn't you give me some oxygen? So this day, everyone's always like, hey, why is your shirt constantly open? Well, I still can't breathe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't breathe. When I tie a tie, it's like I'm redoing my horrible birth. <laughs> The doctor that delivered me, and this is a fucking true story. I just found this out. He was wearing an executioner's mask, and he was just <laughs> letting me dangle no. off the end of it with no. my dotted head. That's terrible. <laughs> my pointy dotted head. So wait, why do I have it? I just thought it was like genetically that was just like the shape of our head. No, I think it just means that our family seals up their little fontanelle too fast. <sighs> Because we were just in such a rush to grow up. Yeah, you're lucky your asshole didn't seal. <laughs> you're, you're, you're sealing so fast. I'd like people to think that it is, actually. <laughs> well, then just you would, start that rumor. You'd be burping farts. <laughs> you would literally oh. be full of shit <laughs> if that happened. Hey, uh, here's uh, Stanley. What's up, buddy? Stanley, what's up, man? Uh, just listening to Gail talk about the mounted bar of soap in a public bathroom, that's got to be the nastiest damn thing I've ever it's heard It's disgusting. Of. Why you would go that route rather than just mounting a liquid hand dispenser? I don't know. I like People it. Like, I assumed that it was old-timey because it seemed <laughs> barbaric to yeah. me. It's nice <laughs> it novelty. so barbaric. Just the way that it's hanging off there like <laughs> a nut anyway. <laughs> it's like, wash your hands on this testicle. <laughs> Fine. Why yeah, would you, it, like, there is something really vile about it, too. Like, it yeah. does look like some sort of, like, a hanging butt plug or something from the wall. That's why Chris loves it, so. <laughs> yeah. I think it looks fun. My, yeah. pro- my problem is, like, all right, so I say I buy this for my apartment. I, I screw this thing into the wall. Where am I going to buy all this soap with fucking holes in them? Just they, mu- like, they must provide it. I don't it's- like that. What do you mean you don't like it? You don't like that they provide the product? No, I don't like that I can't go like just go to the store. Because you, you already you get your 24 pack ahead of time. That's why you're saying it. You now you're going to buy a drill? <laughs> yeah, you've never seen a bar of soap shaped like that in the first place. No. But they make it. Something called Prevendi. Yeah, Prevendi. Mom, where's the Prevendi? I want to wipe my hands with some slimy stuff before I go out my Mounted to the wall like it always is. Thanks, Prevendi. <laughs> hey, do you like rubbing your hands in really slimy, dirty soap? No. And I mean really rubbing then. Like you're masturbating it. Then you're looking for Prevendi. <laughs> do you want something so disgusting to hang off your wall that you were... Uh, friends and family will never want to come back or take a piss at your house. I really can't even look at it. It's so <laughs> disgusting to me. It's really vile. All right. The uh, other big story on the iBang is this uh, Brett Favre was a bully story, and that was from you, Vito. Yeah, so um, there's a book coming out about Brett, about Brett Favre, and in the book they talk about how when Aaron Rodgers was on the team with Favre, he was just a complete dick to him and pulled a prank on him where the team used to have to sign memorabilia for charities and fans. Okay. So Brett Favre steals Aaron Rodgers' helmet, puts it in the pile of stuff, 
has Aaron Rodgers sign his own helmet, and then Aaron Rodgers had to wear it the entire day in practice. And he was seen crying by himself in the was locker Was the whole room. team wearing it? The whole in on it? The whole team writing on it. Yeah. All right, so here's the premise. So if I show up to practice, I'm the backup guy. And the entire team played a joke on me where I signed my helmet and then all the team had signed it. I find out and I have to wear that helmet around. A, I'm going to laugh and feel like I'm part of the guys. And B, think to myself, I got a great collectible helmet here. <laughs> Why would I be mad at that joke? Maybe it's just because I'm a girl, but I'm I'm really not understanding what is the problem with it. Like, what is the embarrassment? The embarrassment would be all the guys on the team signed his helmet, including him. And then he had to go out and practice, by the way, where no one cares, and is wearing this helmet. <laughs> I don't I think it would even look funny if it was a game helmet. He uh, he also had issues with Favre where every time he did something wrong, Favre would be on the side being like, oh, look at him sucking it up again and just talk talk him down, talk shit about him. The whole yeah, they were team, going for the same job. The whole team spread a rumor about him being gay because he didn't... Um, he didn't brag about his like dick, his dick size or like banging chicks. So like he was just the nerdy little kid on his team, and everybody was so mean to him. And yeah, that's but that's that mean though. That isn't that mean. It's you just say you're not being one of the guys. And the helmet thing is actually a funny joke, no matter who it happened to. <laughs> and the fact that you're wearing now everybody's name written on your helmet. So really, you think the story might not be that Brett Favre is a bully, but that Aaron Rodgers is sensitive is more what... Here's the two things that I hear about Brett uh, about Aaron Rodgers, that he is sensitive and aloof. Okay, so the guys in his thing feel like he's a little moody and aloof. He's not one of the guys, and he's not a natural leader to everyone. There's a couple guys that he likes but he's not the kind of guy to go in and try to pump everybody He up. does seem like unlikable. There's something about his aura that just seems like he wouldn't, he would struggle with being one of the guys. Like he would not be able to relate. Yeah, there's all different kinds of personalities. I don't think he has. Look, if you deliver the goods, that's great. What else should anybody care about? But you can't say because you couldn't take the joke that everybody signed your helmet, which is kind of... That's kind of a cute fucking prank as far as pranks go. <laughs> just not like the chair broke and you hit your ass on the ground. You know what I mean? It's not going to affect how you're playing. I think there's only one person he likes in that team, and that's Jordy Nelson. That's the only person he likes on that team. And see, that's not the way you can be because people come and go, and you, you're supposed to be the leader of the team. When you're the quarterback, you're an extension of the coach, whether you like it or not. So you kind of have to treat the guys in the style or the exact opposite so you can kind of seesaw when the coach is yelling you can come back and go okay guys you know he's pissed off let's go show him it's all bullshit but it's the way the world works yeah you know it's like don fucked us over i'm gonna just say now what are we gonna do you know to make this to make this work um it happens it happens life is that way i thought he was friends with clay matthews Look, first of all, I don't want to sit and count as friends. It's a commercial view. <laughs> you know, I, I'm i not a psychologist, and that team has went from one point of being great to average. Yep. Average, which is just about where every other team is this year. Uh, they, How about your Minnesota Vikings? You're like, this is their year. They're not going to. Uh, they looked so bad. Yeah. Both teams look so bad in like, that game. Four turnovers in the first few minutes. There was five in the first quarter, dude. Five fucking turnovers. And you're like, I don't want to watch this shit. I don't want to watch games where fucking quarterbacks can't hit their target almost in every game. They're like, oh, he was open, but that was he overlaunched it. What? What happened to this league? Between Thursday and Monday, there will not have been one good game. The game tonight. I can guarantee it's the Texans versus the Broncos. It's not going to be a good game. Mm, that sounds good. I'm the can't, not the that. Texans are playing. <laughs> I guess I got to catch up on Black Mirror and Narcos. Uh, uh, the other day, uh, I get this. What? You don't watch Narcos? And I'm like, I can't. Please don't start on me about Narcos. I got so many shows I'm trying to watch. I started Divorce, and I have to catch back up with that. 
I'm all the way through a divorce. You got you're uh, up? yeah. No, I I don't, I'm I'm there week by week by week. Yeah, yeah. And I'm loving how angry it makes me. Yeah. I'm literally on the girl's side. I never thought I would be during the divorce. <laughs> I hate this guy so much I can't stand it. Yeah, he comes. <laughs> Did you watch the last episode? No, I have to catch up. You're going to hate him. I'm going to watch mean, it tonight. I literally fucking hate him. And I loved him when he was the mechanic on Wings. <laughs> <laughs> but he is saying some stuff that is so obnoxious and they're so stupid. <laughs> Ron, you don't have to watch Narcos. Narcos sucks. What? Narcos is a show that sucks. I've heard from quite a few people that I need to be watching Narcos. You would hate it. It's what is Narcos good. again? It's about Pablo Escobar. And the that cops. Going the, after who, him. who thought that that was going to be the end of it? <laughs> it's about Nar- about Pablo Escobar. And then he fucking lays on the ground and takes a nap. There's, there's, I, I watched one episode. And the, the voiceover, the narration is so bad, I thought it was a joke. It, don't want, don't waste your time with Narcos. Where does Hillary Clinton get the the fact that each suit looks exactly like the one before it's said it's a different color? I don't know. Where is that place she shops? And will this become a thing in this country? Could this be like her futuristic like pantsuit that she's been wearing? Let me ask you this. The night of her inaugural, the inaugural ball. Yes. Is she in a suit or a dress? Ooh. Oh, she, she's not wearing dresses. No. And I dig it. I, I see what she's saying. Like. You can't look badass in a dress, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's particularly a long gown. I think that she will wear um, an extra festive pantsuit. I wish that she would do this. If she wins, and I still believe Donald Trump is going to win 50 states. But if she wins, she comes out a tux. She fucking Ellen's this shit. That would be awesome. There was a chick who wore a tux. Uh, to my fucking prom. It's a good look. And I said, that's the chick I should have been here with. I fucked up. And I go to my chick. I go, let's get out of here. She's like, why? I go, you look dowdy in that thing. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to walk in there with you, your big dowdy prom dress. I could be with a hot kind of chick in a suit. (laughs) What are you doing, Chris? I'm handing you a plug. For what? For a guest coming in. Why? <laughs> <laughs> When's he coming in? He's in reception now. Should we break or yeah. what are we doing? Yeah, we should take a break. All right, let's take a break. Uh, we'll be back. This is Bennington. Welcome back to Bennington. Comedian Robbie Slowick's in the studio. <laughs> what was that weird thing? <laughs> you angrily said it and then sucked in, like, kissed, <laughs> did a weird, sexy... <laughs> Mm. Robbie's performing during the New York Comedy Festival. <laughs> you gotta restart once you get in the right. fucking story. Right. <laughs> Take your time either. We're not in the speed right. rush. <laughs> Robbie Slowick's in studio. Hey, Robbie. How Hi, are you, buddy? Robbie. Hey, great to be here. <laughs> All right. Uh, that got a little uncomfortable. Now I'll jump into it. Robbie's performing during the New York Comedy Festival for Stand Up on the Spot Wednesday, November 2nd at the Stand Comedy Club. Go to standnyc.com for tickets and on Twitter, it's at Robbie Slowick. Good to see you, buddy. Good to be here. Now, Robbie is also one of. Because we're not giving these away until tomorrow, right? Yeah. The final six is a Friday uh, to win the Joe Montana signed football. Now, Robbie, I don't know how into it you are, but the other people I talk from the six are locked in hard, can't sleep. Yeah, no, I'm I'm real into it, and I I have to win because last year's winner, Casey Ballstrom, is my girlfriend. Is that right? Yeah, and it's oh. super emasculating. Do you <laughs> understand how excited you'll be? The Clintons, all right? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm Highlander. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this thing forever, starting a foundation. Yeah. Well, first of all, good luck. Lo- nice job there with Casey. Yeah, yeah, She's very, very. Uh... She's a doll, and we loved her. Like, yeah, love everything about yeah. her. She's funny. She's sexy. She's attractive. Yeah, don't That's... do too much for her self esteem. She will leave me. Be careful. <laughs> That's a good idea. Keep her, keep a knee on her. Yeah. Keep her down. Yeah. That's the Rich Voss rule of how to treat a funny woman. Yeah. Where he's constantly saying, when she gets in the car, are you wearing that? <laughs> but it works. So you, uh, a comedy couple, though, is that... Comedy couple, yeah. Is that difficult or... No, it's. I couldn't imagine it the other way. I mean, like, we keep a similar schedule. She understands that... I understand that she's out late at clubs, and yeah. she understands I'm out late at clubs, and it works better that way, I think. Have you ever had a night, though, where you're working together, one of you does well, 
the other one not so well. Yeah, consistently. She does well, and I do yeah. not so well, and then we go home together. Because <laughs> you don't want to hear, just after you ate shit, you don't want to hear, that was a great crowd today, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there'll be some like notes that will go both ways after yeah. sets, and a lot of times it's really well received, and sometimes it's like, not, not now. No, not, now. not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Who are the other great comedy couples? Because they're, I mean, this used to be something that didn't happen, and now it's somewhat common. Yeah. Uh, well, there's well, Voss and Bonnie, who you mentioned. Voss yeah. and Bonnie, who are kind of the instigators of all this. Joe List and Sarah Tolomon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Great yeah, yeah. comedy couple. That's a good one. Uh, Pete Lee. Pete yeah. Lee. And Emily Tarver. And Emily Tarver, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, uh, and, of course, we're doing a Unmasked uh, later this week with uh, one from a great comedy couple. With Tom Segura and Christina Pajitsky. I'm also crazy about Christina. Yeah. Like when Tom was in here with her, I had that Jesse's girl thing going on <laughs> because it's not even though like she was great, but like she was great with him. You know what I mean? Like I need that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you ever go over to your friend's house and uh, like the, the chick just starts acting like a waitress or something. <laughs> you're like, his life is great. <laughs> she just baked cookies. And, and she's no one a asks. great little cook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's so 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one thing that you have to give up. I mean, you get the funny, but you also don't get the traditional, right? Yeah, no, not even close to the traditional. And neither of our schedules allow it. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I'll take the funny over the traditional. Now, I always think, too, let's suppose she becomes like Lucy. You know what I mean? Yeah. If she just becomes Amy Schumer... Could you just ride it out and act like, oh, this is great? That is the plan. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly <laughs> the plan. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that those were the greatest dudes on the planet, too. They'll just step to the left while their chicks are getting the picture taken and stuff. They're holding their purse. They're like, I don't give a fuck. This is I'm, great. Yeah, I'm going to be drunk around the pool tomorrow. I don't care. I'm, I'm happy to be Stedman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stedman is a great. Oh, he's got the best gig in the country. Yeah. yeah. He's got the great. And the greatest thing is he won't even talk about it. The the people are like you out with Oprah, and he's like, man, like the last thirty years we're kind of seeing each other. <laughs> <laughs> but he's lived, the, you know, and I'm sure he gets to walk away from it. You know, he gets to walk down the street, no one's bothering him. But then he can go, honey, I want to make sure I get Rangers tickets, and I want to be on the glass. <laughs> and she makes the call, <laughs> even though they're in Chicago. He wants to fly to New York and see a Rangers game. Private, private too. That's cool. Um, are you into baseball at all? Uh, or are you just straight football? No, I, I like I'm a, I'm a Tampa Bay guy, Tampa Bay Rays. Is that right? Yeah, oh. that's such a rare thing to say. Where were you born? Uh, I was just born in South Africa. But okay, that then you have no right to the Rays. <laughs> yeah. Well, I grew up in Tampa, though. Where at? Uh, South Tampa. No. Yeah. Uh, well, tomorrow we got Bert Kreischer, big yeah, Tampa guy. I was just working with Bert. I love Bert. Well, first of all, everyone on the planet loves Bert, but even more importantly, he loves everyone on the planet. This is the strangest thing. Like, he says that he has anxieties, but new people doesn't seem to be part of it. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's very true. New people doesn't, it seems like he could be comfortable with anyone. <laughs> I've never been that kind of person. No? Mm -mm, I just don't want to meet new people. I feel like I've met enough. And I was that way, who's that just walked by? Big rock star. Oh, he's sure. Yeah, go find out who's in here. Get find on. out who all the big rock stars are. Because no one has that kind of hair if they're not a rock star. There was a <laughs> sign out front that said, Welcome, John Bon Jovi. Whoa! Yeah. What? But there was no Welcome, Robbie Slovic, so <laughs> a little disappointing. Oh, Why, Chris? That Chris. Was my fuck up. Always Bon Jovi, never anything for old Robbie. <laughs> I'm gonna you know what? Get some the signage. Fucking next time that, we, that you come in here, dude, not only is your son, name going to be up there, there's going to be a sparkle cake. <laughs> yes. have this cake with Spark sparklers in sparkle it. Good, because I did demand that, actually. So. <laughs> you should. It's in your writer. Know. <laughs> you know what I like? You, you wear a comfortable sweater for yourself. People don't do enough of that. It's a great sweater. Thank you. I really, I've been uh, admiring it. I really time. dig fall. Like I'm going for the fall. It's 10 degrees too warm for what I'm wearing, uh -huh. but uh, it's fall and I'm leaning in hard. <laughs> now, Gail just told me about this thing on the internet. I didn't realize it. What is it called again? It's a, that white people love fall, and I was not aware that it was only specific, specific to 
White people. White people. Black people don't care that it's fall. Hispanic people don't care that it's fall. I don't think that they dislike it, but I don't think that they're running around in the leaves and drinking cider and like being like, damn. I did not know that. Sweater yeah. weather. They're all very white activities. Because white <laughs> people do manual labor stuff like it's a fun novel. Like, let's go apple picking. Right. right. That's really? someone's job. <laughs> yeah. But we pay. I'll give you 50 bucks to do manual labor <laughs> for this. This is very true. White guys also like to fucking shovel snow. Right. Why? <laughs> the guy can't wait for it to snow, so they're out shoveling out front. Like by the time the second flag hits, I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> but that is true. Uh, raking leaves is very much of a, a white person. Like, isn't this nice? It's fun. You well, feel like you have a real job. And I think yeah. also, like the for some reason. The foods associated, like, I don't know, it's like the pumpkin stuff and like all the pies and baking, like something about it seems very white. I don't know. I thought everyone enjoyed an apple cider donut. I mean, that's. I have. Well, you brought me some back when you were the uh, upstate and I'm like, I'm on top of the world right now. They're so good. You know what I had it with? A nice tea. I'm sitting there with a hot tea, enjoying my life. Best donut there is. I was sitting in the. The good chair. And I'm just like, this is, <laughs> life has gotten so good right now. But the other ethnic groups don't care. Asian, like now that you're bringing it up, I don't ever see Asian people talking about how excited they are that that it's autumn. Yeah, it's they not their care. thing. Pumpkin They're, spice doesn't do it for them. They're we, sick of it. Sick of it. Yeah, they, I'm even... sure they're annoyed by white people being so happy about it too. Yeah, but uh, uh, first of all, you're, you're making leaps now okay. that this has become a culture <laughs> war. <laughs> it hasn't. Just because they don't look. Yeah, I don't they, think that they disdain it. Yeah. I think that they're just like, what? Why this season over any other season? Right. Are you guys going crazy? Like, there's um, there's things that black people in, enjoy. I don't like it, but I, I don't get angry about it. Like the pig feet never made any sense to me. I'll eat a lot of different sausages, <laughs> but a pig's foot is not something I'm interested in, or any kind of neck. I'm not. Yeah, no, <laughs> and no the necks. neck of an animal. Yeah, and it's very southern. Southern. Yeah. I think more than uh, than up north, but black guys down south, Florida's a good spot for it. They would go, you don't eat necks? I'm like, no, don't eat the neck of anything. <laughs> I mean, nothing. Name a neck. I don't yeah. need it. You're missing out. What about a little fall pumpkin spice neck, though? <laughs> I would have some of that. I would have that. I feel so good this time of the year, and I will give it from the beginning of fall Right to New Year's Eve. It all seems nice to me. Yeah, it's great. And the great. rest of winter can eat my ass, but that part of it, fantastic. And like, I, the, I mean, I know it gets said a lot, but I think that white people also embrace more than anything the dress of autumn. Yes. Is like, you know, light jacket, flannel, sweater weather. A scarf, a fun scarf. Do you know how thrilled I am to be wearing moccasins right now? This is perfect moccasin you, weather. You can't do that in the summer? They're too warm for the summer, and then in the winter, you don't want to, like, the snow, it's going to seep through the... Oh, yeah, of course. The suede. It's just it's an excuse even... for me, like, to cover up my pasty, disgusting vodka. It is know? a good idea. In the summer, you shorts can... and t-shirt look terrible. Yeah, you can cover up, you can enjoy uh, more foods. You're like, oh, my God, yes, I will go back, because it's sweater time. Yeah. What do I give a show? you a second piece of pie, and a heartbeat. Now, Vito, you're so Italian... And that um, that Little Italy uh, party is in the autumn, right? Yes, yeah, San, uh, San Gennaro starts like end of September and goes for like two weeks. And that, to me, is always one of the... And I wish there was more of it, but it's so packed. But it's one of the great New York um, parties in, in the autumn. Yeah, it's very fun. Uh, I saw a thing in Florida, though. This is They're trying to get this started. Underwater pumpkin carving. Underwater pumpkin carving they're pulling off now. How are they able to do that? Well, you know, you're wearing a wetsuit. You got the breathing <laughs> thing. Other than that, it's they're doing it inside aquariums, I think. <laughs> I'm not even making this up. But then how do you light the candle? What's the point? I guess they put like a little light in there. Okay. I don't put a candle in anymore. I'd rather put a light in. You put a candle inside? Yeah, I put a candle. burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> you know that they used, to put, <laughs> they used to put candles in Christmas trees? Yeah, that's a terrible the, idea. What? Fuck, yeah. Yeah, like it Free was... Free electricity. That's what it started with. They were like little holders that attached to each bow, if yeah. you will. 
And yeah, you've seen them. This is like you've seen like Were drawings there not, like, of them. Thousands of houses. Burned oh yeah, down yeah, yeah. They burnt down I mean, all the time. Bad. It's just worth they it. They burnt down all the time. <laughs> But, you know, how many houses keep exploding these days? And then sometimes those ca- candles would just be in a jar of razzleberry dressing. And razzleberry <laughs> dressing. <laughs> I do like that time of year, too, when the Christmas specials start. And they start earlier and earlier. Uh-huh. Look, Vito's all excited. Yeah, you like Christmas, don't you? I, as a kid, like for me, Christmas started on the Thanksgiving Day Parade when Santa comes out. That is, for that's you? Not, that is the official start Jesus to Christmas. Vito. You haven't... In, 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 now, you, <laughs> here's the thing about Vito. He, he grows up on the Upper West Side, so those balloons are put together in your neighborhood just about, right? I grew up going to watch them get blown up every year. Yeah. That I love. That was really fun. Like, going down, watching them get either blown up or see them, like, lined up before. Yeah, it's The exciting. day of, I don't want to be out there. Why? It's just, like, it's too much. I grew up in a Jewish family, and we, we about 15 years ago, we gave up and just said, look, Christmas is better. Let's stop <laughs> pretending. Let's I, get a tree. Let's do the thing. All the Jewish people I know go like, hey, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Like, like when people go, oh, it's too PC. You can't have Merry Christmas. I go, I've never met a Jew yet who didn't say Merry Christmas. I have a couple Jewish, like two, maybe two Jewish friends, girls who are like, oh, it's important to me to marry a Jewish man. And oh, yeah. But I'm not even kidding. I have more Jewish friends who say, I would never do that to my child. I'm marrying a nice Christian man, nice Catholic, and we're going to have a big Christmas, like they like. You at least have to agree yeah. to just accept that Christmas is better and more fun, and that's it. Yeah, you're lying to yourself if not. But I have know, a Jewish friend who's obsessed with Christmas, obsessed with it because she felt like she was deprived of something that was so fun. You never thought that you were deprived of spinning a top for eight days or whatever. <laughs> I'll just do it. Whatever that you know what I mean? Yeah. I still could get a top for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> this well, is we always used to have. Uh, uh, a menorah. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. Uh, life because it is the season. Yeah, you know what I mean. It doesn't. And people go. Uh, uh, a Jewish guy. now goes. Are you Jewish? I go. No. Then they're always disappointed when they think when you're in the suburbs, they think they meet another Jew. So he goes, Hey, are you Jewish? I go, No. He's like, What's with the menorah? I go, It's the season. Yeah. He goes, It's not for you. I said, Who? The it's rule? on TV. Yeah. I'm going to we lie. The... You know, the, the oil stayed lit. Well, at least yeah. you come clean right away or the secret handshake would have been really weird. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, when I, I, I did radio in Florida and it was years ago. And when I first went down with a Philly accent, my nasal thing, immediately Southern people thought that I was Jewish. That's what they did. Immediately. Really? So I would get these uh, letters that were, that were anti-Semitic. And I'm like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> to get hate mail that doesn't even land at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. it would be like, you dumb Jew bastard. Well, you go back and I'm like, this is great. This doesn't hurt. Yeah. This means nothing to me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like a really tall guy being like called midget and shit. It's never going to bother him. <laughs> That's the rule down in Florida. You're either Southern or you're Jewish. Right. That's it. If you're from anywhere well, else, you're Jewish. Yeah. If... um, And really, on that side of Florida, there's very few Jews compared to the other, the Miami side, right? Yeah. It's very, very Jewish. But when you're in Tampa, people are just like, uh, well, there's more people whose background is pirate than anything else. They actually have a a parade, a pirate parade, Gasparilla, yeah, yeah. that's where great. people line up and pretend to pillage <laughs> and molest <rape>. women. Yeah, <laughs> pussy grabbing. Well, first of all, I know you're trying to be anti-Donald Trump, but he's going to win fifty states. <laughs> I'm pro Donald. Trump. I'm going to be at the Trump Tower November eighth. Did you hear that Ivanka it finally came out something about her and a guy, I forget what magazine he's from, he said years ago, Ivanka said to him, you know, I've never seen a mulatto penis, but I would like to. Use the word mulatto. Yeah, but, but yeah. she said, but I would like to, which is yeah. very progressive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mind. It's like it's a foot in each camp at, yeah. at the very least. But you're not allowed to use the term mulatto. That was something from, you know, my parents would say. I was using that for way for a long time, Mulatto, way into the 2000s. I still probably do sometimes. No, it's just don't, off the table. It's really bad. do not. It's completely off the table. It was a dude from BuzzFeed. Whoever heard her say it that. It was Jonah party. Peretti, yeah. I don't know whether I would believe him, though. Who can remember someone saying something 10 years ago? You'd remember that. Yeah, if you said, let me see that Mulatto dude. You'd remember Ivanka Trump. <laughs> Wait, is, is he, it, was he, was she talking about his cock? 
No, because he's, no. he's white. Yeah. You can't tell in that picture. <laughs> yeah, he's sorry. The You're tweet so was, progressive. That's yeah. why. I don't see color. <laughs> exactly. I don't see color at all. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I met her once and she casually said, I have never seen a mulatto cock, but I'd like to. So I guess they were talking about, I don't know, mulatto penises. And she no, said, No, well, that's the. That, Do you think that she if means. If that happened, then it wouldn't be out of. She, he's acting like she's just said this out of nowhere. They're just talking about maybe cock in general. Right. Now, do you think that she meant in person or like she was talking about just even in pornography she had never seen it? No, I want to say in person. All right. Yeah. yeah. So then the implication there is she has seen a black penis then. No. Um, but here's the thing about her. She married a Jewish guy and then she turned Jewish herself. So Trump's daughter... Is celebrates Hanukkah. I did not realize that yeah. that she had converted. Yeah, and then Trump, who's not even religious, he took it of, hey, why doesn't he turn to what you are? He took it as like a negotiating thing. Right. He doesn't care one <laughs> way or another. You know right. what I mean? Because his religion is whoever has the most money goes to heaven. <laughs> but he was just like, why can't he do what we do, the Trump way? Because he doesn't seem like he's. Like, he'll go out and say stuff about, like, uh, God, but he doesn't seem like he really cares, you know? I, that was the best is when he said that, like, two Corinthians or... Right. <laughs> instead of second, second, yeah. second Corinthians. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, but no one who is Christian or no one who reads the Bible would ever call it that. He's religious the way a football coach is. Where they'll be like, Jesus wants you to get out there and knock Lansdowne's <laughs> dick in the dirt. Are you guys with me? And you're just like, I can't imagine. He wants us to do this. Vito, <laughs> did, did, you went to a religious school too, right? Yeah, Jesuit. Did they try to move the Jesus into sports? Yeah, everything was like, well, our big thing was AMDG, which is like this big Jesuit saying that we'd yell during our huddles, and that being uh, Son of Xavier, like our fight song had religious stuff in it. What is AM? What is that? Ad, ad morium de glorium, or something like that. That old football game. Yeah. <laughs> it's Latin, dude. Why don't you look it up? Yeah, uh, and it's it was just everything was like, look, we're doing this for God. We're doing this for the goodness of others. The community God has built for us. You want to show them your love, you got to go out there and kick some ass. Their motto was Sig Transa Gloria. Mm. <laughs> Glory fades. Yeah, the thing is, and they do it down south, too, where they try to move Jesus. You can't imagine for a second Jesus would care about a single game. You know, like, if you had money on it. <laughs> I always forget he was Jewish. I always, isn't it weird that he didn't grow up Christian? So odd. It's really strange. I, I would like to say to a baby, it's you. We're here to worship you. <laughs> Robert Slovic's in the studio. I see him. Robbie's performing during the New York Comedy Festival for Stand Up on the Spot, Wednesday, November 2nd at the Stand Comedy Club. Go to standnyc.com for tickets and on Twitter, it's at Robbie Slovic. How does that work, Robbie? What are you doing on Stand Up on the Spot? Stand Up on the Spot's a really fun show. We actually brought it over from L.A. It is uh, no pre-planned material. We take audience suggestions, and then we just riff on what they say. And there's more than one person on stage at a time? Uh, no, one person on stage at a time. Mm. Uh, it's a fun show. Seems difficult. It, like the, the crowd work guys definitely excel. Guys like Big J and like Aaron Berg. They'll... That's cheating, though. I think <laughs> it's cheating to start doing crowd work in the middle of something where you should have to write the premise immediately off the top of your head. Where you're just kind of like this dumpsters. Uh, yeah, yeah. dumpsters. That's like, exactly. That's exactly what? what we don't like. We don't want people to lock in. Like, have fun with it. Don't like just sit there, pull Jesus. your notepad out. There's nothing about dumpsters. I mean, you need them for trash. Uh, there's white trash. Am I right, folks? Yeah. But I, I hate if somebody's going to use that to pivot back into their already written material about something like that. Do you ever catch anyone doing that? Yeah. You know, people will ask, like, can we do it? And we say, just try to avoid it. If it naturally happens fine but like try to just try to be spontaneous how many how many um topics come up during one guy's set uh i'd say probably average is like five or six some people will just run on the one that they get and uh you know a lot of the times you mostly you can just pivot from what they say to something else anyway right i'd rather die with the fucking material i'd rather die trying to sit there and write jokes <laughs> just to come up with uh shit uh, aborted fetuses. Let me think. <laughs> um, 
What if somebody was just really good at writing that way, and then they were just like, "You got to get me back on that show. It's the only oh, way I can so write new yeah, material." People are like that. They say it all the time. Like, I got, I got two new jokes from that. Have me on again. Right. Just being forced into something, of course, would make you write stronger. You know what I mean? Just yeah. for, why would you write if you had a, a, an act that was working? Why would you write new jokes? <laughs> you would just sit and wait until those things started to fade over time where you're still bringing up OJ and you're still saying hanging Chad. <laughs> those people do that and they just change the name. They just change yeah. the name. Oh, they, just, yeah. they go up instead of being OJ, it's somebody else in the news. That's always the funniest shit to me is when you see that something used to kill from somebody. But they've kept it in, so it's just getting chuckles. <laughs> like, I don't know whether you guys remember back in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot of, oh, it looks like the Clintons are going to be back in office. Let's dust these off. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's going to feel good to anybody who does a Bill Clinton impression. Where you're just like, and now the president's husband said. So he's going to be Mr. President, right? And she's Madam President. Yeah. If the circumstance was that he was not previously the president, if he was not president before this, he would have been the first gentleman. Oh, which maybe he still that sounds is. too English to me. Maybe he still is the first gentleman, but you would still address him as Mr. President because that's what you do no matter what happens, you know, no matter who. I think it would have president. been better to say the president and the resident. <laughs> 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 I like the way bikers do with my old man and my old lady. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for my old man to come back in here. <laughs> but how involved do you think he'll be if elected? I think Trump's going to win 50 states. But <laughs> on the after the, that, there is an upset. I don't. I have a feeling that he will not be as involved as some of these people who are voting for Hillary. Like, hey, we, it's a two for one deal. I don't think that it will be. I don't I think, think he's it would have be been eight years ago. But I think he's lost his fucking fastball. I think he's I think he's lost a step as well, but yeah. he he's going to do something. I mean, he's not yeah. going to do nothing, so they'll they'll find something. Here's what I would do if I worked on her staff, I would be constantly shutting the door as he was trying to come in. <laughs> <laughs> it just blew like the end of the god. What are they talking about in there? So, Madam Madam President. I don't like the word madam that much. Would you like to say madam? Kind of <laughs> works better for me. What about Mrs. President? Mrs. President. Okay, what's because wrong with that? That sounds like you're married to the president. Uh, what do we call the president now? President, right? Mr. President. Mr. President. We say Mr. President? Or if you're saying President Obama, you would say president first. Or if you were not going to say his name, you would say, Mr. President, may I have a word with you? I would never say that. That sounds crazy to what me. Well, Prez, just for throw Prez. No, Stop, that's dude. disrespectful, Chris. The only way I would say that if, if Rosie Perez was elected <laughs> oh, yeah, president. Then I would. And then Prez would be my nickname for her. <laughs> And then I would so constantly say this, Madam President, you want it upstairs in the bedroom. <laughs> just give her that look because I find her to be unbelievable. Yeah. The most difficult thing, I think, if you were with Rosie Perez uh, romantically would be to not bite her because that's how fucking crazy excited you'd be. <laughs> you'd just chomp into her arm and wouldn't even mean it. You'd be like, I'm sorry, I just got fucking carried away here. <laughs> I look at, here's the early voting states, and they're acting like more Democrats are getting out than Republicans. What is happening with this yellow and blue? You're throwing me off with the colors. Well, Golden State. that's Fox. They go their own way. <laughs> it's a Golden State name. <laughs> hey, what about your Ohio State got upset the other day? I saw that. By the Penn State team. That hurts me. Everybody in Penn State was so excited they went out and molested someone. Yeah. They said, huh. They're like, yay. That's yay. how they celebrate. This is for those kids. Okay. And by the way, who's going to be in your uh, show that night? Do you have a whole uh, I don't out? have the lineup yet. I know you Casey's going to be on it. You wait till the last second. You're that comfortable with your show. Uh, well, I, the stand is handling the booking with us. So nice. I kind of, I got to go back and forth with that. Uh, what's the night again? Uh, it is November 2nd, Wednesday. Wednesday, November 2nd. Sweet. It's going to be fun, man. Yeah. I love the stand, too. Yeah. I don't know what it is about that room. I just love it. It is a great room. It's just kind of, it's sexy. It feels kind of like a jazz. Yeah. It does. It's like yeah. intimate, but it's not too, like, claustrophobic. It just feels like everyone's, like, really close, but I don't know. It's, a, it's a, like a really cool But you spot. know the wood in the background when you're standing on this and you look at the wood? It makes me feel like I'm in a steam room or uh, a sauna. <laughs> 
I guess it's not a more than a steam. <laughs> no one has wooden steam. <laughs> <laughs> it's splintering. What do you wood. prefer, Chris? Steam or sauna? Steam. You know. Sauna. Yeah. Too dry. I think sauna. I've actually never gone for a steam. I've gone to a sauna. That's but never. because you're a woman. Steam and men shit. tend to steam. So good. Women tend to sauna. I do like a dry heat. Ugh. It's just the opposite for me. What about you, Rob? I'm going to go steam, but just because you you prefaced it with that's what men do. <laughs> you know what? I set you up to win. Yeah. The, 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 I was like, I see he's wrestling with this. Let me make sure he's not stuck where Vito is. Vito, want to go to the sauna see, with me? The best, thing is, the best thing is when one guy is out, not two guys. Right. Then it becomes a discussion. Then it's where like, this what is, is just it? going to become a beat down. <laughs> But you know me and, that me and Vito with our little towels. I remember those Latin chants in the steam room. <laughs> the reason I like a sauna is because I get stressed out every time I've looked into a steam room. I can't see what's going on in there, and I like the idea that I look inside the sauna and I go, I know where I'm going to go sit. Like I'm on the outside, I know what's going on. There so should be stress. You're either worried, one of these. You're worried yeah. weird shit is going on in there. Is what you're saying? Yeah, well, no, he I, did grow up in New York, <laughs> and his steam room is different here. Yeah, I was in the I was in the gym. Uh, of, like last year and this guy came sat down next to me put his towel under him and was naked and then I'm listening to music he just keeps going so how old are you and I was like I, I don't want to do this and just I'm like, say 15 <laughs> and he just keeps talking to me it's and then I moved over then he moved closer to me and then I went over to my locker which was still in the view of the area and he moved his seat so he could stare at me at my locker mm. alright Vito thank you for spreading homophobia yeah. it hasn't happened in a couple of years <laughs> Look, some people like bears. It's not a big deal. Just embrace it. It did feel good to be desired. <laughs> the bear is actually, I mean, the twink is the number one thing. Yeah. Yes. But you're but, thinking it's you're the bear is what you're saying. Well, you got to go for it when you're the bear. Yeah. You got to go for it. And I do like dudes that wear leather for no apparent reason. You know what I mean? Like, it, they're not actually riding a motorcycle, but they're dressed like they are. <laughs> if, if I was, if I was a gay man, yeah. and God willing, uh, Next slide. <laughs> uh, I would, I think I would prefer the otter, which is, which is the medium sized, but like kind of like Bill. And then hairy. So not as big as a bear, but as hairy as a bear, oh, and, but more medium size. In the straight world, we call that Greek guys. <laughs> but <laughs> it's the, the otter. otter. See, straight, uh, this is the weird thing. If you're an otter in the straight world, you tend to shave down. Yeah, in their world. I mean, that guy is unbelievably hairy, though. Yeah, he's pretty it's hairy. It's up over his shoulders. <laughs> <Some> dark, dark <laughs> hair. I think the otter's a rare spiting, <laughs> rare sighting. Yeah, they're really, you know, there's really a scene for them, though. Yeah. They're like, I show me a direct bear. Okay. Otters are very in shape, though. That's not what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. That guy was yeah. shredded. Like here's a bear. That's that's a bear. A big burly bear. That's a big bear. Big, big bear, bear likes <laughs> sunny. Big bear likes sunny. <laughs> I never had a chance to call. I see bear. those dudes. They're dressed like they're riding motorcycles, but then you'll see the guy on the train. He's wearing like a leather jacket, leather pants. Sure. You're like, are you worried that the train's going to turn over <laughs> and you need this for the long skid you're going to go through? <laughs> Robbie Slovak's in studio. <laughs> Robbie's performing during the New York Comedy Festival for Stand Up on the Spot Wednesday, November 2nd at the Stand Comedy Club. Go to thestandnyc.com for tickets and on Twitter, it's at Robbie Slovic. This sounds like a show I want to say, dude. I got to tell you the truth. It's a great show. It's a lot of fun. It's I, a lot of fun. I like the chance to see. I don't want to see anyone do really well. I prefer <laughs> Crash and Burn. I prefer Tightrope to everything that I'm seeing in life. And then, you know, then you get somebody... You know, once the panic starts, that's when you get true creativity. I agree 100%. <laughs> when you're, like, really screwed, that's yeah. when, like, very interesting things happen. Yeah, you get a good mix at this show as no. well. Because you get a lot of people who kill it, and you do get people who eat it up yeah. there. Yeah. I imagine it's like being called on in class when you weren't prepared for anything. <laughs> and you're just, and like, <laughs> making up your answer. I actually said this to a teacher once. My hand wasn't raised. You're calling on me. <laughs> I see 11 people with their hands in the air. They want it. Go to them. If those 11 miss it, I'll come in at 12 and I'll save the day. But I'm not starting this. <laughs> Every now and then we'll have a comic who, rather than to try to be creative, will just flip on the audience for not being quite creative enough. Like, I like You that. could said anything. You said spaghetti. You want to talk about spaghetti for the next 10 minutes, you idiot? And I do like that, though. Yeah, that's another tactic. That's what I've always done with... 
women is turn it back on them. Yeah. Accuse, You're crazy. Accuse them of being accusatory. <laughs> this is why I wish that you would have saw that last episode of Divorce. I'm going to see it. I feel like I should give something out. Don't. Though. I'm going to see it. I'm going to watch it Let me tonight. just say give one premise and then we could discuss it. Okay, fine. Because Robbie's in a relationship himself. Okay, fine. So it comes up. What is more of a cheat? What is more of a disappointment? Uh, a physical affair, right? A physical affair or an emotional affair. That became a topic. What do you think, Gil? Okay, right off the bat, to me, an emotional affair would hurt me more than the thought of someone just sleeping with someone else. No. I Love. pray that Casey has an emotional affair so I don't have to deal. You take this other, take this problems to someone else and we'll just keep doing the physical stuff. I will tell you this. You guys split just like men find the physical affair is unforgivable and women are closer to the emotional affair being unforgivable. Why do you think that is? What do you think that, like, at the core? I think, first of all, women have to get used to men having affairs <laughs> if they want to stay married. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just the thing. You have to go, okay, that's going to happen. That's part of it. Vito, what about for you? You're a bear. <laughs> <laughs> what do bears think about What if this? your otter went in the opposite direction? <laughs> I would. I, I could deal with emotional affair because it's just like you're friends with somebody. Physical affair, ter- because then you're just going to be thinking about... Is that guy better than me? Is that like... Is yeah, but that's, that's the, the same thing of what thing. I would think about an emotional affair. Like, I'm not, like, going to be, like, wondering what her right, vagina's but, like. I'm going to be, like, sitting there see, going... See, that's the thing. Oh, my God. Like, what does she give to I, him? Like, that... I, I'm, I thinking off my, I'm thinking off the top of my head, like Robbie demands in his show. <laughs> and I think that women don't feel... They feel like the man better be good in bed more than they have the responsibility for being good in bed, where a man feels 100% of the time we have to be good in bed. You think that's true? I think it's true. I think women feel pressure to be good in bed. Then my whole thing is wrong. <laughs> and emotional affair. <laughs> but I think if, if, if I counted emotional affairs as being an affair, then my, I would have said my, my chick has always had friends everywhere. Yeah. And people that I don't even know. When does something cross the line from being a friendship into an emotional affair? I think when it be, well, that's, I think when you're depending on that person or secret keeping, that's what women. Secret, yeah. Hate. The thing that would bother me is like, okay, like you're dating a man. He has a female friend. He's incredibly close with that female friend. Okay. But if that person felt the need to keep that from you or away from you, or hide it in any manner, immediately that would feel our, uh, automatically like an emotional affair. That they have a secret friendship with a woman that they couldn't spend that time with them, with you, or sometimes with you or not with you, or tell you, oh, I was talking to her yesterday about this crazy idea I had, right. whatever. If you were secretive about that, that would be far more painful, I think. Wow. Than just... I mean, it would be, I would be now, upsetting. The other would Chris, be upsetting. Yeah. Your chick had emotional and a f- <laughs> physical affairs. You no, know, as far as I know. No. <laughs> oh, she did. She did not. And she liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and she said all the men were better at, you at, at both. God, I am a cock. Yes. <laughs> you're an emotional cock first. That was, that's the funny thing. If you're an emotional cock and oh you had to God. sit and watch your chick go over like, should I do this with uh, another man? Most guys I don't think that oh would bother God. them. I would hate to be emotionally cucked. <laughs> And then you just watch them have a conversation. Yeah, they have a conversation. She's giving him such good advice. <laughs> right. That's what women want to be the person who gets advice. I never heard that painful story about his childhood before. It's a very strange thing, but it lit- you guys broke exactly the way they did in the show. And then I'll just give this part away. Yeah. When he <laughs> said, what hap- how many times? Were you with that other person, right? And she's like, you don't want to know this, blah, blah, blah. And he says, I do want to know. I want to know every detail. Ugh. And as soon as she said, he was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> Stop it. I had a much smaller number. And it was very. It was a very good episode. It was very funny. Divorce should be getting a lot more heat right now. Vito, have you ever wanted to know every little detail? I like after a breakup? Yeah, like even... 
Yeah, if I... Yeah. Yeah. You actually go and watch her with new boyfriends. That's no, cuck. I, you I like being cuck. Does that the just the say second it? I break up with somebody, it's I delete them from my social media. I don't want to see anything. <laughs> I don't want any reminders. I just want it out of my life. Because that would bother you, even if you were no longer had feelings for that person. The thought of her being with a fi- physically with another man, even if you weren't into her anymore, would be painful. To this you. is yeah. why child is is hurt hurtful because your first breakups, you're sitting next to the girl, <laughs> and then you're seeing her in the hall with her new boyfriend. I don't think teachers realize how fucking emotional that is on kids, you know? That's such a good point. I never thought of that. It's it's uh, one thing that I honestly believe that when they say puppy love and you break up, it's as bad as any divorce you've ever been in. Because then you got to see them Frenching under the bleachers. Yes. Yeah. Then they're going to start Frenching in your bleacher spot. <laughs> That's where we used to French. She gave me a handy there. <laughs> 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 and some people, of course, when they're younger, they just don't care. You know what I mean? Like some people are like easy to chill with it. I know you had to be where I grew up because it was so socially incestuous yeah. that everybody would just keep on along. It you had to, you had to yeah. be able to roll with it. Like, okay, you're with him now. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't bring up that I cried in front of you that time, though, right? <laughs> Keep that between us. <laughs> Say Thanks, anything else you want. <laughs> yeah, see you, buddy. Uh, we got to wrap this up, huh? Yes, we do. Robbie Slovic's been in studio. Robbie's performing during the New York Comedy Festival for Stand Up on the Spot, Wednesday, November 2nd at the Stand Comedy Club. Go to standnyc.com for tickets. And on Twitter, it's at Robbie Slovic. Uh, what else? We got a, a plug here, Chris. I guess all the uh, master sold out of that this week. Yeah, all the, um, yep. It's Tom Segura, Burke Kreischer, sold out. Sorry, folks. You, you fucked chance. up. You yeah, fucking chance. We begged you. Moose yeah. out front should have told you. November 2nd, I want to go to the show. Rob, good luck with this winning it all, too. Uh, Gotta uh, do it. Can't have Casey lording it over my who, head. Who were the final six? <laughs> the final six are Mitchell Walters. Jim, He's good. Jim Florentine. Good. Nate Bargatze. Good. Ari Shafir. Doug Benson. Robbie Slovic. Hmm. I didn't say anything after Ari. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I know something. <laughs> Doug Benson really wants the bad too. He was yeah. telling me. Yeah, yeah. I, and he took, I don't see him as a sports guy. He loves. He's this. really dedicated to the to, to this. Though. I know who he has tonight. You want to know? Yeah, tell me. He has the Broncos tonight. Oh, that's, smart pick. That's, yeah, that should smart be a smart pick. pick. You know, it's uh, Mitchell Walters that keeps going inside straight. Robbie, do you know Mitchell? I don't know, but he's the one person I don't know. Of course not, because if not, he would have owed you money. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you ever get the chance to meet him, <laughs> run. <laughs>